Jonah will be so good at least by Peter. The what? From afar, get high. Ends up losing his life and stage triple G just faces him. Oh! you like them apples? Welcome Survivors, this is the Free Fire World Series Southeast Asia 2024, day 7 of the knockout stages. My name is AJ, I'm the Mustache, you're down here with the one and only Husky. We are your casters for the day. Husky, how are you feeling today, man? Feeling excited, you know, third week means we're almost halfway through the entire group stage. I'm expecting some changes today, I'm expecting some improvements for some of these teams, and most importantly, I want to see some shifts on the leaderboard. Now, most importantly, what happened to your hair? To, oh, my hair? Who, who threw a ball on your head? <laughs> You're actually not the first one to say this. I was on a podcast uh -huh. a few days ago, and some random viewer was like, uh, who gave him a helmet? <laughs> I, I, was, okay. I did not see his face before the broadcast started, okay? This no. has caught me off guard. Husky, have you not seen me with this haircut? No, I have not. I need explanations, my friend. This and last week is the same hair length, just styled differently. I'll tell you exactly what will not be the same as last week. Buriram will no longer hold that number one spot. Or will they? Any team that looks to defeat them needs to aim for more than 100 points, which is not impossible. You've seen that happen before, but it's not a walk in the park, Husky. Yeah, I think Viram has a higher chance of hitting these crazy, uh, these crazy results than any yeah. other team out there. But I agree. If if today, uh, you know, the other team step up, maybe stalwart, right? We didn't get to see them towards yeah. the end of last week, and mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, reverse rate as well. That's why BRU overtook them. Yeah. But there's going to be some window for these teams to kind of catch back up again. Yeah, C Triple G needs 96 points to overtake them. Stalwart needs a solid 100 points. Not impossible, but with both of these teams looking to hit the high numbers to get the number one spot, obviously there's going to be a little bit of a hustle and tussle there. Reverse Red, they've got some pretty super slayers in their team as well. So, you know, the, the fight out there is going to be difficult, right? Attack all around is not going to be playing because they are in Group C, and today only Group A as well as B will do battle, which I do pity them for because each and every single day they go out there to battle, they have someone called Buriram waiting to take all of those points, right? But of course, this is the top tournament timeline we've already completed two weeks of play and this is week three this is day seven we start things off on the 5th of april 6th and 7th saturday and sunday that'll complete week three and then we take a two-week break to come back and when we do come back there will be a little bit of swap in groupings yeah, and that is my one of my favorite parts when it comes to these long drawn out group stage where mm. you don't only face off against the same opponents. These group shuffles is really what makes it exciting. You know, kind of like a, a I would say a slight improvement from FFWS last year, which is one of the first times we don't have a group swap, and that was kind of disappointing. But I'm glad that it's now being brought back. And in an extended league, this group swap, these group shuffles means a whole lot more. And of course, the point system as usual. You hit the booyah, you walk away with 12 points, 9 points for second place, third uh, place gets 8 points, and so on and so forth. Last two spots though, 11th and 12th, gets absolutely nothing. But you can bolster yourself with all of those elimination points, which are so much more easier to get now that teams are out there super hungry for points. The revival system has been improved. In fact, super buff. It is very, very easy to bring your team members back in as long as you've got those free fire coins in your pocket yeah and, and it, it also being able to buy anyone back from you know along the way mid rotation or during a firefight is also very very useful yeah. never thought i'd see the day that revival points become slightly redundant because i feel mm. like that is 
uh, has, has been a very intricate part of competitive Free Fire. You yeah. take a risk and then you get rewarded big time. But I think the current meta is really encouraging teams to take initiative and really consider the options, right? Do you take fights or do you fall back? Because you got to find a balance between these two. And eventually, if we have a tiebreaker, we're going to have to look at these few conditions, starting with the number of booyahs the Thai teams have. And if that is the same, we'll look at the total eliminations they both have. And if that is the same as well, we will unfortunately have to look at their survival ranks for the final round. Yeah, absolutely, man. And of course, if we get down to that final item, which is the survival ranks, there's no way you need to go anywhere beyond that. You only have one team taking one spot each and every single game anyway. But the question is, will we have a tiebreaker situation in a competition? Competition as heated as this, as well as in a tournament where you see some teams really stepping away from the competition, right? Once again, Buriram United Esports with equal number of games played, 24 thus far, has got a 95 point lead on the overall leaderboard, which is absolutely insane. Yeah, not just that. They only have two extra Booyahs. They, they actually have the same amount of Booyahs as Star Wars Esports, mm, and yet mm. they are so far ahead. Yeah. We have to look at today's team list as well, right? It's Group A against Group B, so GOW, Team Flash, uh, Indo Stars, Evos Divine, CGOG, and Expand will be playing. And we also get to see Star Wars uh, and Reverse Raid trying to catch up to that first place alongside Homeboys, alongside RQ Kazu, P Sports, and Heavy. And of course, Reverse Raid will be super delighted whenever we drop on into Bermuda, and that just happens to be map number one. They are the dominators on that map. So therefore, they may just open up the day with an explosive run. But the question is, can they keep it up? Can they continuously chug in the consistency? Because this is a team that pretty much struggles with their placement, right? Every single time you walk on out there, you see them hitting some decent booyahs. Like you said, you know, they may not have six in their pocket, but they do have three to their name. But that's not every single game that you see that. Yeah, and reverse rate is also kind of a mishmash of certain veteran players, right? You yeah. talk about the players like Saming is one of the best ports from Thailand. But for Group A, uh, I personally want to see Team Flash make an improvement. They yeah. had a horrendous week number two. They at the end of week two, they are still placed lower than Homeboy said a conspiracy which is something that is not on my bingo card for this tournament, and yet <laughs> here we are. Heavy P-E-R-R-Q, Homeboys, Stalwart, as well as Reverse, Red in Group B, and out of these teams, obviously, we have to focus on Stalwart Esports, who's trying to make a mad dash for that number one spot, but, but we also do have the team in conversation, Reverse, Red as well, aiming for the exact same. They are about 18 points behind Stalwart Esports, so there is a absolute need for them to perform a little bit better and bring in the consistent today which they as well kind of struggle with and we also have to talk about indo stars right last week yes. towards the end of week number two they also made a mad dash off their own now mm. placing in seventh place and not that far from evil's divine they're not that far from attack all around and if today goes any anything like last weekend i think we might see Indo stars contest the top five spot as well yeah, absolutely man 2.4 on the average headshots 2.0 eliminations on average out there on the battlefield with an average damage of 1182 his most used character the tatsuya and this is 18 deer that we're talking about one of the more proficient slayers out there from indonesia yeah, absolutely. I mean, even from last week, they got 148 points in total. But also, we have to talk about Expand as well. In week number two, they themselves actually gathered more points uh, than Indo Stars. Uh, Indo Stars got 148, Expand got 153. But on the overall standing, they're actually below Indo Stars just slightly, right? Just by yeah. 11 points. Absolutely, man. And of course, this is a team that I would say struggles a little bit not with consistency, but with the battles out there against the other regions. But albeit, even though they do struggle, they are the best bet that Malaysia has. We may need to change that flag though for Roy. He is Malaysian and not Thai. <laughs> On a 1.1 average headshot, 1.5 average eliminations with an average damage of 956. This is a little bit of a surprise because this is the firepower of Expand. Yeah, the firepower expand, and then you look at Roy, uh, there was a period of time where he's not even with the team, right? He just decided to venture off on his own, and unfortunately wasn't able to find much success. And coming back to expand, he really, I feel like he has found a place finally, fi uh, kind of seeing that his worth and what he can bring to the team. 
and kind of just push through all those doubts that him or people have casted on him. And yeah. right now, looking at Expand's overall performance, you could say that they're not only the best bet for Malaysia Free Fire, but at the same time, they've transcended uh, expectations that we saw from last year. It's not yeah. uh, they no only they no longer battle themselves. Now they are truly fighting against the rest. I am just slightly confused. Today is Group A versus B, right? Husky, please don't stab me in my face for asking this weird question on broadcast. <laughs> All right. Because well, this expand is in group C. So I'm uh, sorry. No, expand is in group A. Sorry. I, my brain is all confused. It's the first oh. day of battle in week three. I, you gave me a heart attack. I was like, <laughs> I was like, wait what? a minute. Wait a minute. Aren't they somewhere else? They're not. They're not. They will take a break tomorrow, though, if I remember yes. correctly. They will see them on Sunday again. <laughs> oh, Sorry boy. for the panic button. I, I hit it a little bit too early. Stalwart Esports, definitely a team that we all want to be looking out for today. Average nine eliminations every time they step onto the battlefield with an average damage of 5,428. And that's way too much of damage for anybody out there to be dealing with. Uh, you mean you gotta give it to them? They once, or at least some of these players, once finished third uh, on the world stage two years ago, right? And they still maintain some of that performance, yeah. albeit there were some shifts uh, down, uh, down the middle, especially last year, where this team at that point, known as uh, Nigma Galaxy, and then I believe before Star Wars, they had another organization, I think EXP Esports, they went through kind of a title shift, right? There were ups and downs, but right now, I think with this a revamp roster with Saifar around as the Russia. Uh, I feel like Star Wars has really found their place in the competition. Yeah, 60 eliminations thus far for the guy. I mean, he is a powerhouse of his own within Star Wars, but he's not the only one, right? You've got Stop there as well. But let's take a look at CGGG here with a 5.9 average eliminations. Average damage on 5,562. Average assist 8.5. These are pretty stacked stats on the side of CGGG, and they are not too far away from Buriram United Esports they made a mad dash of their own for that number two spot last week. Yeah, no, not at all. I think when you compare them directly to even just a Star Wars eSports, you can kind of see the difference, right? Star Wars, very he elimination heavy, mm. but for CGG, it's very calm, cool, calm, collected. They, yeah. they rely on their utilities a lot thanks to Cosq, but on our screens, it's on fire. His uh, elimination count might not be as high as what we saw from the players of Star Wars, but you can be sure when you need on fire to really pull off a clutch, he can mm. deliver. Oh yeah, absolutely. 62 eliminations thus far in the competition and he is absolutely popping heads out there on the battlefield but the headshots obviously cypher taking away the cake here all other sectors it is of course on fire with a slightly bit more dominant run when we want to look at the eliminations he will be the one with the firepower let's take a look at the comparison of numbers here very very neck and neck and i'll tell you exactly why right when you look at c triple g as well as stalwart esports they're separated by four points 100 161 points for placements for CGGG. Stalwart's on 158, and that's the only difference. They've got the exact same number of eliminations of 215. And that's that's how, that's why the stats show, right? The average elimination for the team is nine each. And even on on this graphic alone, you can see one of the biggest difference is just how often they rescue their teammates and how many clue walls they destroy per game. Yeah. And it really gives you a very good idea of how they dis how they want to play their mid to late phase. We talk about CGG relying a lot on utilities and that mm -hmm. glue wall destruction kind of reflects that. Absolutely. And of course, the top three used characters out there on the battlefield. Tatsuya is the main one, main active skill that is brought in. Homer is usually the passive skill that is, sorry, the active skill that is bought as the secondary skill out of the shop. A124, one of the ones that are used by uh, the players out there. And, you know, this one's a no-brainer. You want to disable your opponents with the A124, especially if you're a rusher. Tatsuya, pretty much anybody and everybody would want to have him in their arsenal so that they can either have a mat dash in there for those eliminations or get out of a sticky situation and everybody wants to bet on homer these days just so that they can get a little bit of an inkling as to exactly where the opponent is slow him down and then take him out yeah, kind of a mixture of the the meta from two years ago and the meta right now right the tatsuya plus homer can be a very interesting combo but for the passive skills it's good to see awaken andrew now back in the fray oh, yeah. uh, unquestionably the most used a passive skill character but we also have Suzy that's what's giving everyone so many extra coins to go for those revives to buy resources along the go 
Yeah, absolutely. And of course, Nairi with the Ice Iron. Not many of the players do bring him in. We have seen a little bit of a choosing here, right? A couple of players bring in Nairi, a couple of them bring in Susie. They want to have that balance. And that's exactly what the current meta forces you to do to really think exactly which one of these characters you want to bring in as your passive power. Because there's quite a number that's super buffed out there that will be very useful in the battlefield. One thing that really hasn't changed much is Ar uh, Arvon. <laughs> Still the most used pet, yeah. Dinoclius. Is way too strong. Who needs a UAV when you can literally scan ha the map from like the, your location from like half the screen away, right? Half a oh, yeah. map away. That's what Arvon provides for you. As some at, at one point, I remember uh, one of the metas. Uh, a lot of teams bring like double, triple Arvon just mm. because the Dinoclus is so much valuable. But it's good to see Beaston and Draki being brought in once in a while. You have the utility during uh, during close quarter firefights. These pets really help you out. And these are the maps that will be played. Bermuda, Purgatory, Alpine, Kalahari, as well as Nextera in that exact sequence. And then for game six, we hit that reset button and a absolute random map. One of these five will be brought in, which will definitely bless one of the teams out there because we've seen not everybody is proficient on every single map that is played within the game of Free Fire. Not everybody can be Burira. No, a lot of teams uh, have maps that they prefer, right? I think yeah. when we talk about preferred maps, we have to talk about Reverse Raid because when it comes to Bermuda, uh, they are on top without a shadow of doubt. Oh yeah. Just surpassing 100 points total just collected on this map in terms of eliminations they are also they also have the highest count uh, in 73 then you compare expand and c2g these two teams uh, are not even close to that yeah this is a very rare occurrence where all three teams that are the top three on bermuda are featured here usually you uh, I, you would hear me saying that okay this team's not going to be playing today that team's not going to be playing today but all three of the powerful teams are here which means whenever it is group a versus b bermuda is super hot and very very unpredictable very very intense as well and again when we have these powerhouses we have to also look at how they affect some of the bottom dwellers mm. uh, for me i, I know we, we talk about team flash a bit i also want to talk about homeboy conspiracy because mm -hmm. the the race between these two teams <laughs> uh, it's kind of interesting right they are separated by six points and if anything, I want to see, at least by the end of the first three rounds, will these two still remain in the same spot? Or will they at least get close to Todak's position? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what race you're talking about, Husky, because they are racing to nowhere, especially when it comes to catching up with Toda. But with that insult being thrown towards them, we do have a massive number of days to play here. We have only concluded two weeks and we have got four more to go within the knockout stages. So if they had not bucked up in the past, that can all be thrown out of the window. As long as they show us a massive improvement today, we can, of course, draw back some of those words and throw in the support instead because homeboys can Conspiracy has been utterly disappointing based on what they have been able to do within the Malaysian circuit. We see none of that fire out here on the Southeast Asian table. It is some, it's kind of like a throwback to 2023 where the Malaysian circuit was kind of their playing ground and then we go to an international stage and mm. homeboys feel like they were not even present in mind, let alone physically. Yeah. So this is a rerun of that, which is I think for a lot of the homeboys fans, they are not happy about so like you said hopefully they turn it around because we, we can't go through this every single year where they smash the local circuit and then they go and fight the other regions and then they end up at the bottom uh that's just not exactly how it should work yeah I, I know right but hopefully of course it is a little bit different for them today we did mention that it is the most unpredictable results whenever group a goes up against group b in bermuda and one of the main reasons why we say this is because if you look at this combination of grouping, there has never been a team that has walked away with two Booyahs on Bermuda. We have got a total of six Bermuda games played between Group A as well as B. In all six of those games, we have had a unique team walk away with a Booyah. This has been Reverse Red, C Triple G, Heavy, Evos Divine, Stalwart, as well as RRQ Kazu. Will today be the day where we add another team into that list, or will we finally break the curse and have a team pick up their second Booyah within Bermuda? 
it's either that or at least for for today we have six unique booyas right across mm. every single map because i remember when we closed out week number two sunday itself we mm-hmm. only had we had six booyas and only three teams getting yes. the booyas i remember buriram got it got it uh snee triple g got got it as well i think the last one was it in no stars or some teams but yeah i, I hope today we're gonna have a lot more of variety when it comes to teams winning around I am absolutely looking forward to a firecracker of a matchup in Bermuda once again. This is the kind of game where there is just no way you predict who walks away with the booyah. You may be able to predict who dominates the map with the most number of eliminations. Reverse Red has shown that they are very, very dominant here. Expand has shown that they are very confident on Bermuda and they can walk away with those points. But the booyah is the one thing that I would not put my money on. But of course, as we hop on into the game, we hope you've got your snacks and drinks ready. It's time to go into Bermuda again and kind of give us a bit of a taste of how, what these teams have been cooking for the past week. Not that much has changed. No new patch, no much changes. But the only thing that I want to see is kind of adjustments, right? Teams that are not performing that well, what have they got for us? There is a big problem here for teams that are struggling to get themselves into the top 12. And of course, there's quite a number of teams from Group A and B that are struggling in the bottom. Mainly Heavy, God of Wolf, Team Flash, as well as Homeboys Conspiracy. So I'm interested to see if anyone hot drops them because they are technically easy picking when you head on into Bermuda. Even for Heavy, it's been so long since we saw them on the international st- international stage. Mm. I remember that every regional event or every world Uh-oh. event, I look forward to seeing Heavy and they never show up because they never get to qualify. Uh, but we might see a bit of a... A hot drop between them. I think I believe Team Flash is very is near heavy as well. Yeah, it's a very close proximity. But thankfully, Team Flash decided to divert away stalwart uh, on the southern side. It's a very I mean very slow opening. In yeah, fact, and- all the teams just picking their own spots. Uh, except PE Sports, which for some reason has decided to hot drop expand. Wow at their home base at Clock Tower. This is a little bit of a surprise because PE Sports isn't really the strongest team out there. They have been struggling when it comes to those engagements and Expand is very proficient on Bermuda. That being said, it is a 50-50 when you take a hot drop against anyone because you never know exactly what weapon you can get or what weapon they are going to be picking up here. So luck may just decide how this one fares, but PE Sports is not waiting for luck to tell them anything. They're just saying goodbye. I think that's the better move. You come to the you come to Clock Tower. You, teams that are confident in controlling Clock Tower early on usually know what they're doing, and I think mm. you know PE Sports they just tested their luck a little bit, realized that it's not going to work out. They back off. But this team just barely made it into top twelve. I remember last Sunday yeah. when they had this run. Is not even the best of runs, but it was just enough to squeeze into the top place, and that is also because uh, certain teams are not playing right. So you get to kind of push them down the leaderboard a little bit. But I say that, I actually oh, yeah. found Butterfly. He was on scouting duty nearby and unfortunately was not able to get away. So obviously, Homeboys knew that Clock Tower belongs to Expand. They very specifically sent out Butterfly to check out exactly what the movements will be. And of course, that was a well-calculated sacrifice because a revival onto Butterfly is going to be very easy. What I do not understand is, what were you going to do with that information? Uh, I, I have no idea either. <laughs> To be honest, with you, mate, <laughs> revival is that cheap. Revival is that cheap that you can just send someone out, and then you get them back. As if this wasn't already a trend, you know, like a couple months back. Yeah. Now teams are just gonna straight up abuse that mechanic. But yeah, I, I, I totally get the abuse, but I do not understand to what means, right? Uh, to what ends? Because they sent the guy out there. Now they've got the information. He just got wiped out there. Because the last time we did see. Uh, uh, this particular grouping on Bermuda, I believe Expand rotated out to meet homeboys. So there could be a potential here that Butterfly was meant to stay there to ensure that he gives that warning if at all Expand wants to drop by the spot of homeboys a little bit early. But the UAV could have just crashed that party there for them and Butterfly caught caught off guard. That was something that they just did not foresee coming and he did not have the right weapon in his hand anyway. He was divine on the other hand with Gaday all tagged up already. Might just give God of Wolf their first point and the grenade Ooh. just a little bit wide. Still finds the clip but no knock just yet. Still looking for DNP. Oh, Abax does get knocked down but you have Gaday to come in and actually finding two in a row. 
So Evos now to kind of have a man advantage. In fact, Imbot will just go for the revive. Not doing too well though. Well, stalwart on the other hand against RQ Kazu. As Evos Divide continues to try and take down GOW. And we get our first team wipe in under 4 minutes. Evos Divide. They saw GOW. They immediately put out the portal. Abex led the charge. And they ended up getting a full cleanup without losing a single member. Yeah, it's a clean use of the time turner there, but obviously not enough to find them that victory. He was divine on the flip side of things, played that absolutely well. G'day walking away with two of the eliminations, Abex and Ray getting one each. So a fantastic start for Evos Divine, but Trouble may just um, seek them, or are they going to seek Trouble out? Because as they rotate into Bima Sakti Strip, look who's waiting. Making a lot of noise as well. Expand should at least have an inkling. Ooh, that's... It seems like they have. There is spotted Ray. So a bit of gunshots exchange, and that is going to actually... Uh, <laughs> make Evo's Divine stop. It feels like they might want to continue fighting this. You can see Aim God, he's looking for a vantage point already to see if he can spot any of the assailants, but expand. They are going to just rotate away. They don't want to. They want, don't want any smokes this early on. Yeah, smart play by expand to rotate into Clock Tower, down into deep mid of Bermuda map at Bima Sakti Strip. And that will just mean that they will not have to travel a lot there to find the next circle. Question is, what they're going to come across once again. Stalwart Esports on the other hand with RRQ, and it looks like the portal goal is going to be setting this fight up for it. That's true. Push onto the roof as well. And you can see that this portal actually leads to literally where RRQ is. I've been holding that utility in his hands as well. As Dew will be looking for an angle to provide support fire from yeah. the side. I think this is actually not too bad of a of a rotation to work with because RRQ yeah. Kazu, I don't think they have any coverage of where Dew is going to place himself at. But the problem is, how is, is RRQ going to take this? Because losing that root control means that Stalwart can always monitor their movement. And this is the one core reason as to why Stalwart's so dominant out there, right? Dew's positioning is just absolutely dangerous here. Yeah. If that flank does come off here, it might just prove to be very severe for RRQ to deal with. But RRQ is playing all of these defenses within the houses very smartly. Legoloth is holding on to the balcony very smartly to make sure he does not get taken out just yet. They're trying to stall the space here! And a very nice. just deals the biggest of damages to the team of Stalwart. Stop just found two in a row though. This could be the turn of Caramel against Legoloth. Legoloth! Can withstand the firepower of just too many bullets hitting their way, and that is RQ Kazu wiped out in 11 place. Meanwhile, Reverse Red having their own fight as well. The Thais are just wiping out the Indonesians very early on in the game. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And both of these teams, Reverse Red as well as Stalwart, are looking for those points desperately so that they can catch up with C Triple G. Of course, Stalwart has to work a little bit less than Reverse Red, who are a solid 23 points behind catching up with C Triple G. And of course, there is 23 more more than whatever C Triple G can pick up within this match as they are definitely going to be playing within the day. Um, perhaps not in this round, but within the day. <laughs> I I personally feel like just now, uh, I was surprised that Star first gave up the roof. I thought that they would fight RQ Kazu, but RQ Kazu, they took the roof, they took down Dew. That should have been a good opening. But unfortunately, in the gunfight department, they ended up losing to Star anyway. So very, very unfortunate. Uh, for the Indonesian Giants and uh, for Liam, I think this is it. He is not going anywhere. Unfortunate, um, I would say bad decisions being made by the Indonesian squad as well. Just rushing on in, Stalwart kind of just saw that coming. Two players waiting on that second floor had a very easy time just squashing all of them instantly the moment they showed up. But now with Liam at the very edge of this map, with reverse red all gathering around him in a 1v4. Team has absolutely nowhere to go, nothing to do, 50 more HP, and he says goodbye. Yeah, they get the nade knock, but uh, no finisher. Team very unlucky. Well, I, I wanted to say, thankfully, IDS is still in the game, but I just Oi. saw, well, I saw Kochu got knocked down, and uh, that landmine actually paid off. Again, no cleanup means that all this utility actually is for naught. You are not getting the full benefits uh, from it. IDS can still... Not in a good spot. I just realized IDS are scattered all around the map. You have... I believe two members already went down. The other yeah. two surrounded by Team Flash. And there is a revive. But IDS are just going to play a slow game because they have no resources. 
it's a decent strategy to play to split up in the current meta especially when you can just whip out that pocket market and buy your team members right back as long as you've got enough coins in your pocket they're spreading all out to ensure survivability for the squad and that's just not the kind of style of gameplay i like from any of the teams out there i do like them sticking together playing the game of numbers against their opponents but we'll just have to see exactly how that fares for indo stars later on all four players are right back in it so nothing much for them to worry about and homeboys also just touched down near plantation and i think Homer. c just caught a whiff of that they saw the portal so they know that someone is making this mad dash into the circle and that team was homeboys they took the launch pad into a portal so the, tr the transition is very very good you get to cover a lot of distance but in this case uh, c triple g they might think of making a move on to homeboys depending on oh, if they feel oh. confident now but this portal actually leads them into another malaysian team and it, it expands the question is will expand be able to survive this it is C Triple G with a better position on fire. Pushing on fourth with Cause Q. Axel tagging up on fire. No return fire just yet. Cause Q may just be a threat here with the Drogon in hand. Axel with the power foul turns around. One more with the sniper. M82B. Very dangerous. X Troy. M887. But on fire. Does put Axel down to the ground. Crime MKS with the grenade launcher. Does recover oh, two. one. Recovers two. Crime MKS doing a lot. And Cobra. Yeah, he's going to make sure that all the effort that Crime has put in will not go to waste. They actually are going to try and chase down one more with the portal. One more taking the second one. They're just playing smokes and mirrors at this point. Does Expand want to continue to chase? It seems like they will. Tanking the blue one more with the first shot to knock down Cobra. But from behind, it's going to be a convergence of Expand members. And what do you know? Expand getting the wipe out on the C Triple G. That is very well played, but the action doesn't stop. Here comes Reverse Red, this time meeting Team Flash, who's desperately trying to climb up the leaderboard. Currently waiting in the 18th spot. They've got six more points to catch up with Homeboy's Conspiracy, and the conspiracy is Homeboy's are going to be helped out here by Reverse Red. Good glue wall melt is laid out right in front of Reverse Red. Look at Diamond with a long flank around the left shin, tossing in those nades, forcing Reverse Red to back away. No defense at all for the Thai squad, and that just seems to be the benefit here for team flash they're gonna have to deal with the circle whilst reverse red abandons the project here to look for a better defensive spot will team flash be able to get a couple of shots on the way into the circle reverse red are trying to just pull ahead as much as possible but they got bigger problems now it's not just team flash it's also heavy we saw the portal actually being placed down reverse red repositions and finally finds a safe haven away from the prying eyes of heavy and team flash but they put themselves Kind of in a, a death triangle, right? You also have if Evo's Divine uh, onto the west. And Spade, on the other hand, finding Lee with that uh, RGS. It seems like IDS might just meet their demise in the hands of homeboys of all teams. What? This can't be survive! <laughs> A double courtesy of Butterfly. The eliminations are there. Indonesia perhaps didn't stand a chance, but here comes Evos Divine tagging in for Indostars. Perhaps they will be able to finish off the homeboys. Or will the homeboys go two for two, back to back, shutting down Indonesian squads one after the other. Ray up on top alongside Aim God and Abax, but Spain in a very dangerous position. Nobody spotted him out just yet, and he could just be the one to take the perfect backstab. And here comes the portal of this. Just have bombarded homeboys enough to think about going through, but there is the Riptide Riddle, and that is going to force Evos to uh, back off. And when I say oh. back off, it's actually repositioned to the building that is connected to the pier, so they get to continue shooting at a homeboy syndicate. They will end up losing Ray, unfortunately. I'm not sure if Evos Divine wants to continue this because IDS somehow found themselves back in its compound. And reverse red in their sights. Yeah, reverse red just absolutely wiping the floor with the players on the side of Team Flash who went in for the pursuit and just thought they were chasing a team that was weak. But my friends, the current ones who are the weakest on the board is you. Team Flash saw that one absolutely nowhere and dropped the ball with one final survivor there. The question is, can they hit some sort of a revival? I don't see any vending machines within the minimap and stalwart! out already that's a surprise that is a very big surprise in fact i thought that they had a good position uh, in this game but now it's stalwart out the game is wide open the only team that is the top performing team left actually only two teams is expand and reverse red 
see Raz actually taking a parachute, but I believe he just got brought back as well, so he will be perched on top of the roof. Actually, he tries to steal the truck and make a getaway, but that truck takes a while to start moving. Oh, oh, I believe he's comes. been taken out, so no Grand Theft Auto this time. Uh, the problem here for homeboys is expanse right in front of them and there can only be one malaysian team standing by the end of this circle expand making sure that they are that malaysian team on the right hand side oh i have to say the left hand side of the malaysian squad stands two indonesian teams but saming helping out evos divine shut down the players from Indostars narrow up on top. The shots do connect. LBT joins him, but he goes down instantly as Hans delivers the shots from the Woodpecker oh. Apex down as well. Look at Axel's shots. And so shot! Absolutely Watch ripping! Him. Can he get three for three? Hexroy going in for the finisher. What a backup play from the rest of them. And Team Flash is out. Evos Divine hanging on by a thread. Can you believe it? Axel is on fire today in his opening round, consistently landing these shots. And now they gotta try and bring it back up. This man is an important asset to the team. And yeah. he himself have nailed five eliminations for Expand. The most we've seen in a long time, 12 eliminations and counting. Reverse rate in the size of Heavy in the meantime, as they try to fight con for control over the circle. Evo's Divine against Expand on the other end of the map, but Evo's Divine are only left with just one. At this point, I can repeat my statement once again. Expand is very confident when it comes to the Bermuda map and the gameplay. Crime MKS now holding on to the left, and he will be in charge no. of making sure they do not get stomped by Reverse huh? Red, but a great reposition by Team Expand on top of the roof. Right down below them is Reverse Red. They snipe down two players on the side of Heavy first. x Roy goes in for yet another shot. In the meantime, he was divine, gets taken out of the fifth spot. And a double! Oh my goodness! The grenade clips both 17 points in the hands of Expand. Expand is literally ripping everyone to shreds and now is them in reverse red. 17 eliminations. Can you believe it? Reverse red need to reposition. They actually put down a portal, but nameless stuck in no man's land. Finally able to make that transition out but behind. the open. But expand. They actually split into two forces. Reverse red, they're coming back. It's a faint and switch. They might have been expand into a rough spot and now they try to overwhelm expand with the numbers, but expand able to make a retreat with the blue walls. Reverse red. Trying to catch them off guard, but Expand completely prepared for this push. And now it is a full on battlefield. Expand, can you somehow stop the aggression of Reverse Red, led by Diamond and Namus? From the corner, Cobra has to receive the Crime and KS, will need some space, bought by X Roy. As ID is still watching from the side, Sami finally lands the shot onto Crime and KS, but X Roy replies, and X Posey also with an answer of his own. At the finisher is that Diamond though. Nameless hanging on for his dear life. Diamond gets brought right back up onto his feet. X Roy goes down. It was a great setup by Expand. And Cobra saving his partner. But in a 1v2, can he still stand? Answer is no. Cobra gets taken down as well. And the team is eliminated in the third spot. Now the final ones left here is Reverse Red as well as Indosars. And Reverse Red making sure that it's not the case. They walk away with a booyah. But that number one spot, I I don't think it's them and Reverse Red pulling out the the technique of expand to dance on cam when they hit the booyah. I'm telling you, Reverse Red with the 9000 IQ play took the portal to reposition down in the middle and expand was like, okay, I think we can pincer them and Reverse Red immediately makes a 180 degree U-turn Catching Expand completely off guard. And Expand's formation was not meant to take on Reverse Red head on yeah. in that manner. And they were able to overwhelm Expand. But nonetheless, uh, this is an impressive round, not just for Reverse Red, but for Expand themselves. Yeah. So even though Reverse Red got the booyah, I must say, Expand, they are off to a hot start. Yeah, I mean, IQ 3000 plays from both teams. The Malaysian one, as well as the Thai squad of Reverse Red. The Malaysians expand initially with that setup. They sent out X-Roy as well as Crime MKS to the... Fl sorry, uh, X-Roy first to the opposite side of the map even before they started engaging with Reverse Red. So X-Roy had already set up this crossfire and he was waiting for someone to run away from his team so that he can take all of those sniper shots against them. Reverse Red continued and he they fell for that bait. They used their portal go. They went out towards the middle part of the map. X-Roy shot at them. Like you said, what they did not expect was for Reverse Red to say, okay, 
fool, <laughs> the joke's on you. We are coming right back. And when they went back in, only two players from the side of Expand to deal with four on two. That math is easy. They put Expand on the back foot. Expand started running away. Two of their players got nailed down instantly. The, the attempt to save the play was there. We did see some trades in terms of not coming through from Expand as well as Reverse Red. But the IQ plays from Reverse Red was just too overwhelming. And that one reversal, Husky, like you said, when they used the Portal Go to go back, that was pretty much the finisher of Expand. Yeah, it, only lunatics would do that. And uh, mm. who is... No one is crazier than Thai teams themselves. But I... I believe, I mean, x -Men probably picked up a thing or two, right? Because they stream yeah. with these boys a lot, oh, uh, yeah. with the Thai teams a lot as well. Uh, this is, I would say, for reverse grade, a slightly slower opening. I mean, they were chasing down stragglers. They were basically just bullying IDS and making sure that they get into the circle first. Whereas for Expand, oh boy, the first fight was with C-Triple-G and, right, and soon after they beat C-Triple-G, it felt like they had this surge of confidence. Axel was hitting ungodly shots consecutively onto moving targets, which was something that you do miss about this young man. Oh yeah, no doubt at all, man. And it was a very beautiful play from both of those teams. But in the meantime, of course, homeboys kind of continued to struggle out there on the back to the circle. Good, you know, the job was pretty difficult with even Expand putting a stop to their run and the Indonesians just didn't have a great day. That all being said, we had one final survivor from Indostars who just stayed hidden away from all of this heated battle and he still walked away with that second spot. I, I always thought that. I was waiting if uh, to see if he would somehow just try to disrupt the entire 4v4 between mm. these two teams. But, but no, he just waited. Raz, you coward, you, you slick coward. <laughs> you, you just waited behind the blue wall. No one bothered to... Uh, to look for him and yeah. I mean uh, it was a smart play on his part but man I really thought that he would at least try to join in I mean when you can't mess with eight players out there on the battlefield the best decision you can make is just stay quiet and hope and pray they do not find you nobody found him and obviously reverse red focusing on the bigger task on hand which is to take out a full squad that was very clearly playing smart maneuvers out there on the battlefield right once again yeah. with expand kind of starting off that whole encounter getting onto the roof hitting down on heavy taking those shots against uh the players of reverse red as well everything was beautiful but we have to hop on over to the die desk to listen to what the players have to say we've got the interview coming up for you And this is the first Ruya in the third week and we are with the Nameless! Yay! <laughs> From Reverse Lace Card, the first question is... How do you feel to get the Buya after a long time coming? I feel like I can Buya after we haven't been able to Buya for a long time. I feel like I can't get the Buya after a long time. I felt very really relieved because we got Buya from the, the first week and then we never get it again. Okay, so uh, in the game, according to the game, I saw that your team used very oh, intelligent timing of portal. Do you have any tip to use the portal for the fans? Short the game, when we use the the game, we use 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 วาร์ปจังหวะไหนก็จังหวะที่ได้เปรียบครับแล้วก็จังหวะที่เขาแบบไม่ได้ตั้งตัวอะไรอย่างเงี้ยครับจังหวะเผลอที่เผลอเล่
Yes, okay. And this is Nimle from Reverse Land who got the first Buya of the day. So good luck for the next game. Thank you, ha. <laughs> okay, ha. And now back to you, Shoutcaster. Not gonna lie, my I I for a while I thought that we we're gonna see expand, and then I remember they didn't get the buya. But it's fine, it's fine. We came really close. <laughs> close, but not close enough. And Reverse Red continues to be the most dominant team as far as this particular group combination is concerned, as the dominators of Bermuda and the only team within the fight between A and B to walk away with two buyas on Bermuda. So that's a pretty solid achievement for themselves. There's a reason they are the top three teams. Was it them or Stalwart? I think it was Reverse Red, right? Yeah, like Reverse in first Red. place. Yeah, the the number one team uh, on the Bermuda ranking and proving it, proving once again why that's the case. Oh yeah. With the MVP being Exposy, uh, that final fight, uh, he really, really pulled it together, uh, racking up six eliminations all on his own, but also being able to consistently trade back and forth with, with Expand every single time someone goes down. Exposy is there to kind of back him up. Yeah, brilliant plays from this guy overall. The R ones, um, you know scans that he used as well gave the team a lot of information to play around with and al allowed them to kind of dodge many of those instances where they could have been wiped out even in a situation where they could have taken a clear fight against flash they decided to take the defensive spot first before continuing on with the battle and they eventually did wipe out team flash as well so that kind of shows they know exactly when to back away from a gunfight and when to stay and absolutely demolish their opponents a double tatsuya double a124 played out there every single player bringing in the awakened andrew for the extra layer of defense this is just a a very balanced active as well as passive skill set up here by reverse red mm -hmm. just very straightforward you know no uh, no sub no extra shenanigans they it, it's a more standard game for them i think it suits reverse red uh, again you always have diamond that you can rely on he's kind of the guy that always runs into a firefight and then Saming just provides support uh, from long range. And even our elimination leader, the S Axel, uh, he's off to a great start. Seven eliminations under his name, Exposy in second with six, and then Saming stopped and Crime MKS with four apiece. I mean, it is a explosive game for the Thai squads, no doubt whatsoever. Even stop walking in there for the side of Stall with Saming and Exposy getting in. Prime MKS as well as Axel makes it onto the board as well. It is truly shocking to see how confident they were out there after struggling in a couple of those games. But once again, Bermuda is their strongest map. I'm hoping to see this team copy and paste this sort of a performance in those other maps as well later on. Ah, it's definitely a rare sight. Even in terms of key players, Axel himself has the most knockdowns, right? Eight knockdowns, seven confirmed eliminations, which is a crazy uh, as an individual stat. And then you have Exposy with the most rescue uh, and the longest survival time, and Raz, uh, who has revived his the most teammates in this game, and even became the last man alive uh, in the final circle. I remember in a prior in a previous tournament there was this player interview with IDS, and then they were asked like, oh which player on your team likes to mess around a lot, you know, who likes to feed in a game and mm. you know, lo and behold, he's actually Raz, but he's also the best survivor somehow. Pretty ironic if it's when you look at it. <laughs> I mean, sometimes when you just absolutely refuse to get taken down and of course refuse to get into battles, that eventually happens. Top three weapons used within this game, the Bison with the 13 eliminations, followed by the Woodpecker clocking in 11, and AWM with the six eliminations, and I'm pretty sure four out of the six was taken by Axel's AWM. Oh, I'm 100% sure uh, that that is the case. Uh, he was landing a crazy shot, I think, against Evo's Divine. Mm. Evo's never really stood a chance against Axel. He was just free hitting them from 10 miles away, and I think it really disrupted Kind of the momentum of EVOS and speaking about that, we could get the result of this game. If not for that Booyah, Expand would have had the most points gathered, but it's fine. You know, Reverse Ray got 26 in total, Expand still walked away with 25. Oh, I mean, that, I, it was absolutely close. Indo Stars playing the sneaky game of just staying quiet, walking away with those placement points. They get nine in total, four eliminations for a total of 13. But when you look towards the bottom here, God of War walking away with nothing and C Triple G surprisingly dropping the ball. They were in a position to kind of hold on to that second spot, but just with one game, 
things have instantly changed around. Mainly, of course, because Stalwart has brought in those seven points as well. So now C Triple G really has to buck up within the next game if they want to take that second spot back for themselves. Definitely does not feel good if you're C Triple G and the team that you that actually w wiped you out cleanly uh, mm. was Expand. Oh, so yeah. that perhaps is also kind of the boost of confidence that really allow Expand to continue bar barreling through every single team in round number one. When you look at the overall standings, just like you say, AJ, C Triple G currently in fourth place with Reverse Red taking over second, Stalwart third, Attack All Rounds not playing today. Mm. But EVOS, they still maintain in sixth place and Expand they are very, very close behind. Oh yeah, absolutely, man. And the stars, if they can keep up that sort of performance, you know for a fact they are going to continuously climb up this leaderboard, be it with the eliminations or just purely with those placement points. Onik, on the other hand, they will not be playing today as they are in Group C, so they will not be making any movements alongside WAG, who's currently in the 10th spot. So it is the opportunity for RRQ Kazu as well as PE Sports to make the climb. But PE Sports cannot afford another battle like what they brought into Bermuda earlier. No, absolutely not, because behind them are Heavy and GOW, who are both playing today as well. So if, if disaster strikes uh, one or two more times, I think PE Sports might just instantly lose the top place, uh, place slot that they worked so hard to get into. Maybe on Purgatory, things will change a little bit because uh, PE Sports, even though they do no longer hold the title of the Permuda team, Purgatory mm -hmm. is still not that bad of a map for them. They still get to perform decently well. They have fallen far from those times where we named them uh, the team that was the most dominant on Purgatory. Now they are a mid-tier team when it comes to this particular map, especially when you combine and compare groups A as well as B. But let's take a look at the top three here. Stalwart attack all around as well as Buriram Esports, but attack all around in Buriram, they are not playing in this game. So the best ones would actually be Stalwart Esports, C Triple G, as well as Reverse Red. Now, this is a threat. All three Thai teams are very dominant on Purgatory, and they are the best when you compare groups A as well as B. And I mean, Stalwart with three Booyas, right? Mm. So, on almost all the Purgatory maps played, they have gotten close to half Correct. of the amount of Booyas. Yeah. And it's like, what, the total of Attack All Around and BRU combined? I would say, you know, for Stalwart, Purgatory being one of their best maps, not a surprise. Uh, you look at some of the players on that team, they have, yeah. they always thrive on that map even before Stalwart was a team in Free Fire. So it's good to see that they have maintained that consistency. Groups A versus B have only played three maps thus far on Purgatory and all three of those games, Stalwart walked away with the Booyah. So I think if the numbers are checking out, it should be Stalwart walking away with his next Booyah as well. The ones closest to them when it comes to the placement points is actually PE Sports, but not when it comes to those eliminations. They have truly struggled out there on the battlefield. They only have nine eliminations when you combine all all four of those games played. By the way, all of these teams have played four games thus far on Purgatory. So the points are not going to be like, you know, record breaking, but they're decent enough to tell us exactly or roughly paint the story as to what we can expect out there. I'm going to quickly deviate a little bit. Just now I saw mm -hmm. the uh, I saw the kind of team camp of Expand and uh, Cobra's current hairstyle reminded me of how I, ha I was like what, uh, two years ago. <laughs> Somewhat yeah. along that line. Before I actually cut my hair, you know. Yeah, I, I will have to agree with you. I will most definitely have to agree apparently, with you now. Apparently, a uh, modern young man go through that phase. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's a new thing. So give, so give them two years and they'll have a ball on their head? <laughs> Perhaps. Perhaps. <laughs> it does make it easier to uh, use less lesser hair products, easier to, to manage. Uh, very convenient. And, and you don't get mistaken for someone else when you use a public bathroom. <laughs> I, I can definitely agree, man. I mean, okay, we're, we're going we're gonna to put a pause on that conversation. I have got a question for you, right? In this All next right. game, do you think Expand will bring in a explosive play once again? I mean, they started the day off hot, like super hot, right? They should be confident now, but their performance here on Purgatory has been absolutely abysmal. When you compare all 12 teams that are currently playing, they are ranked 8 out of 12, which is really nothing to shout about. Uh, if you ask me, do I think they will, honestly? I think they will finish mid at best, but mm. I do hope that they can, uh, they can kind of exceed that that 
kind of that average results, right? Yeah. Because the one thing that this team has been struggling with has always been consistency. For as long as we've known these players, whether they were uh, on a different team or playing together as expand, that has always been the issue. But the one thing I would say mm -hmm. is that they have been able to find their groove uh, this year compared to last year, right? Where they were still yeah. going through this soul searching phase. Yeah. So the possibility of them having a more consistent performance through and throughout, even on the, the map that they are not that good on, is definitely higher than I would like to admit. Oh yeah, absolutely, man. I, I can agree with you, especially when you mentioned the average points taken away, not much. They've got a 7.0 average points taken up on Purgatory, which is really unacceptable <laughs> for the best Malaysian team out there. As a matter of fact, what makes it even more unacceptable is that Homeboys Conspiracy have got a better average. They've got 7.8 average points taken on Purgatory as opposed to Expand, which should make questions pop all over their heads at this point. Expand really needs to step it up for themselves. And of course, if you want to compare what they walk away with, with the most dominant team, Stalwart Esports, who walk away with 23.0 average points on this map, you know there's a lot of stepping up to do here. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the average point that ST has is three times the average point of both our Malaysian teams. <laughs> but to be fair, if, I wanna, if you want to put the expand and homeboy conspiracy argument mm. to rest, just talk about the total points that these two teams have. <laughs> expand is like more than twice the amount of total points. It, it really yeah. gives you a very good picture of like, okay, so you're good on one map, but yeah. what about the other four or five maps, right? Yeah. Uh, four maps, I think, in this case. So I think if there's a team that needs stepping up, expand sure on Purgatory, but Homeboy's Conspiracy, you gotta step up on every single map. And yeah. I, I mean, looking back at Bermuda, it's not the worst. Uh, Homeboy's did eventually fell in the hands of expand. Mm. Uh, so let's see if they can, you know, just do some minor adjustments. I think yeah. Bermuda as a start is honestly not that bad for their standard. Yeah, but the reverse applies as well with Expand having more than double of the overall points that Homeboy's Conspiracy has within their hands. But at the same time, struggling on Purgatory just means that this team needs to step up big time on this map. But of course, let's move the topic on over to the Thai squads as well. I did mention Stalwart Esports, the most dominant team on Purgatory thus far with a 23.0 average points. But Triple G, who are the second best from this particular grouping, only have a average of 13.8 points followed by reverse red on a 13.0 points i mean 13 versus 23 is quite a long stretch solid esports has been absolutely wrecking everyone on purgatory yeah, essentially getting almost a free booyah on average right before they mm. even uh touch down on the map itself I think that really sh kind of shows you how Stalwart has uh, completely uh, mastered this map to oh, a yeah. certain extent. I, there are certain areas on Purgatory that I personally feel like are areas that would end up having you uh, taken out very early on. Like for example, if you drop Ski Lodge and you get trapped there, you're done so. Uh, if you go to Mode House and you have no contingency plan out, you are also going to get wiped out very early on. And I think these teams are usually the ones at most risk. Uh, perhaps that might have changed a little bit in this tournament, but looking at the uh, the bigger numbers, that's usually the case, right? If you get forced yeah. to these corners of the map, you are in a lot of trouble. I mean, at the end of the day, as long as they can make sure they disable Starboard Esports early in the game, if that at all is possible, they should stand a strong chance to hop on in and play for those points, play for those booyahs, because once again, this particular grouping of A and B have only played four maps of Purgatory, and out of the four games, Stalwart has hit three booyahs. They are standing on a total of 92 points picked up on Purgatory, as opposed to C Triple G, who are on 55, Reverse Red on 52. There's a solid 40 points difference between them, and that's pretty insane when you look at how a team can be so consistent. So this can just be said as one of the best maps for Stalwart Esports, and they've only got six booyahs in total half of that came from purgatory so we expect them to excel but we also do expect some teams to go out there and disrupt them if they do want to make some sort of a getaway when it comes to the performance here on this map i think to add on to, to that to your point is as well aj is stalwart the team with the best the most firepower i don't mm. think so right mm -hmm. i think BRU, C Triple G, uh, even reverse rate to a certain extent can match up to that. Yes. Uh, I think what really makes Stalwart 
esports so much better on Purgatory. It's just how they are able to constantly uh, make those good rotations, right? You are basically utilizing how big Purgatory is as a map, and you are not only able to make good rotations, but you're always able to catch people off guard. It, it is a very uncomfortable map to play on because there are just so many open grounds that you have to travel so far compared to the other maps that you're playing on. And a, a lot of times, teams get caught mid rotations. I think we've seen multiple examples. Even the best teams in the world have ran into these kind of uh, these kind of situations. And I think Stalwart, with their understanding, has been able to take advantage of that. I have to agree with that assessment. And of course, one more point to throw into this bucket of opinions as well is the fact that we might just see them stumble because out of the four games played at Purgatory, last week being the final game played at Purgatory, they faulted. They only walked away with a total of 10 points and only three points from placements, which means they got demolished pretty early. The teams are starting to catch up already to know exactly who is the threat out there. But it is impressive that they still managed to walk away with several eliminations before getting taken out early in that game. It is uh, kind of kind of their brand, I suppose, right? I think, yeah. you know, there are a lot of teams that have these kind of uh, tropes where they are horrible survivors, but they're really good fighters. Well, let's see exactly what happens here on Burgundy. Would it be a stalwart or would it be them getting kicked out early and another team walking away with a booyah? We just have to wait and see. We hope you've got your popcorn and drinks ready. This is gonna be an explosive one. If Stalwart gets another booyah, there will be a 100% BR rate for Stalwart on this map, at least in the eight, uh, A against B grouping, which is insane if you think about it. Let's see exactly what the flight path has in store for us. It's right down the middle of the map, opening up the full map of Purgatory. And that is super rare. This is a huge map that we've got on play. Very early on, Heavy taking a quick drop alongside PE Sports. They go ahead to Command Lodge as well as Forge. Let's see where the rest of them go. Thus far, no hot drops just yet. No, it's all right. Actually, starting to drop very early on, but they actually glided into the to the middle of the map. And look at this, taking up a lot of space. The entire mm. fuse uh, is basically controlled oh. by Stalwart. Oh, this Ooh, is uh, very Eagle stars and expand. Okay, very interesting drop here by Stalwart. A fully spread out Indo stars, hot dropping expand, but at the same time, Flash is at Brasilia. Brasilia is pretty huge. And we did see a very early use of that R1 um, on the bottom side of Brasilia by Expand. They managed to scan out two players. So they do know two squads are here with them and they have to deal with the first one. The blessing might just be that Indostars just walked away from a pretty weak game in terms of elimination. So the adrenaline might not be pumping as high just yet. Of course, the exception might just be for Raz as he was the final survivor who got the... Placement points for the squad and expand not waiting to find out exactly who's going to be winning the battle at Brasilia. They pick up their loot and they got out of there. Smart move. Abax earlier on, I think, engaged oh, wow. in a very early fight. Got brought back. It's them against Reverse Red and the fight is going to continue at Mode House. I believe it's a 2v2 with one player on each side only having a sidearm. Nameless trying to hunt down Abax. Actually, from the window, we'll be able to find him. Exposey actually getting tagged. Nameless as well. I don't think he was Divine can chase this. So Nameless gets to bring Sami back up. Today is just a tad bit too slow to the party. Can't save his friend Abax. And at the same time, can't get to the second floor. All thanks to the good solid glue wall here. Dropped Nameless circling around. Spots out Gade. Gives the information that he just stepped on to the back side of the building and Nameless with the sprays but G'day with the exact same gun manages to hit that headshot and take him out of the equation but the revival is instantaneous by Diamond yeah, and Samin wow he just got himself a, a mini Uzi <laughs> let's see let's see it is a 2v1 though and uh, G'day has all the firepower that he needs Abax Trobot in hand immediately goes for the swing and oh, Samin wait. doesn't really have much left at least not in a 1v2 situation. It's uh, very much unwinnable. And G'day takes him off. 
Uh, the Trogon versus the Mac and the uh, Trogon's definitely gonna take the cake here. Homeboys versus Expand though. Malaysia versus Malaysia. Axel hits the first. Spade hits the instant revive onto Butterfly. But the point still goes to the side of Expand. There's another player there for them to prey on. But in the meantime, we hop on over to Team Flash, who's doing nothing. Oh, I mean, this is so much better. I mean, uh, with Team Flash's current position, I'd rather you do nothing early on, you know, play it safe. <laughs> And, and I'm not not saying it, it not saying it in a condescending way. I'm just saying this is probably the better way for them to approach some of these rounds until they start finding their groove back. Because even in yeah. the previous game, uh, Team Flash have not made any progress. Yeah, because for some weird reason, Team Flash just can't shoot. I mean, they can't walk away with eliminations. Team Flash has played a total of 25 games through which 84 eliminations are the only ones they picked up. Six games played over at Bermuda, 15 eliminations. I mean, the numbers are just not looking good for them. Purgatory, four games played, 14 eliminations, slightly better, but still nothing to scream about. They really need to step it up in the elimination department. GOW, who won the immense pressure. I believe that's a portal, so you get to retreat for now. And RQ, well, not, not really affected by it. Uh, we don't get any knockdowns, it's fine. Uh, shoot down that UAV first. Let's see where RQ wants to head towards. It seems like they are very interested in quarry, even deploying their own UAV. Information gameplay at its finest, but it scans no one at the moment. GOW spots it out. Instead of shooting it down, they are choosing to walk away from it. That's a smart play. And that will basically give the information to RQ that there's absolutely no one there. C Triple G will find a mission here to eliminate Wally from the side of Flash. So we'll see exactly how that particular encounter goes down in a bit. They should be able to track the guy. Interstars all spread out, but nothing to worry about as nobody is there to punish them for this move. Mm -hmm. Even you look at the elimination leaders, uh, Evo's Divine have three players up on the leaderboard for now. And mm. big, and it's just because they and them and Reverse Raid were going at it for quite an extended time uh, despite team flash going on the going on a very defensive you know a defensive approach to this round doesn't seem like they are that decked out to take on a fight so i mean at one point you have to start gathering a bit more resources homeboys rotating on and a big potential to encounter in those stars They'll go ahead to pick up the points. God knows they need them. And reverse red finding Evo's Divine. Abex does hit a instant reversal here onto Diamond that got the knock. But he will be able to pick up his team member at the same time as well. So that's a two for one in terms of benefits. And the rest of reverse red backs away. Not looking to further engage with them. Stalwart, he spots on the other hand. All the way down from Forge, inside the circle, so not much movements needed from them in terms of maneuvering themselves in for a better defensive position. Can't say the same for GOW, who have now come across Expand outside the circle. You see that GOW are not interested in this. They will send the UAV out just to deter Expand, but I mean Expand, they are closer to the circle uh, than GOW are. So for them, they can just continue their rotation. There's even a vending machine along on the way there. Mm. So they're not too worried. But GOW is going to be a slightly longer journey and they will have to uh, pre prepare themselves to take on expand if they want to continue down that path. C Triple G on the other hand, actually is, might have seen the members of RQ Kazu nearby. This could be another fight. Divine, slowly but surely approaching PE Sports. Engagement is kicked off already. And it looks like PE Esports spread out a tad bit too far and a one-for-one -one thread between PBT, sorry, LBT, as well as his opponent. Can Ray get himself picked up here? Abax already tagged up outside the circle. G'day joins the fray, instantly knocked down. Kachil is there for the trade as GOW now loses their players. Aim God says he does not want to be a part of this, but PE Esports is not letting him on the zip line now for free picking. Can they hit the shots? In the meantime, yeah. Indo Stars will hope and pray they survive this one against GOW. The portal goal instantly Triple puts kill. them right in front. Iza, can he get away? You're only to the corner of this map and still knocked down as his vehicle explodes. How unfortunate. Grenade goes in for the finisher. 
Very, very unlucky. He even put down the portal, but just could not take it in time. Stalwart, on the other hand, they're ready for a rush. It's not too heavy. And as fast as they launched the attack, uh, Heavy also dropped. I believe losing two members. Heavy, the first team to get eliminated Oof. in the hands of Stalwart. Unfortunate for the Vietnamese squad. And heavy getting eliminated early only means that the race for the top 12 gets a tad bit more difficult. PE Sports is still alive and kicking, and they should be able to, no, nah, they will be able to extend their lead a tad bit so that the journey of Heavy gets a little bit more difficult. Shin, good knock by Triple Nameless. Kill. Reverse Red absolutely wrecking them with the positioning here. Flash has nowhere to run. Wally all tagged up. Nameless taps away with the Bison, but a misplacement here off the glue wall. Stops him from taking the player down. Artemis on the flip side of things wants to put the trip mine down onto the ground. Nameless still finds him. Does he go in for the finisher and get knocked down? We'll have to wait and see. Seems like Envin is the last man alive and taken down. Oh boy, not even a contest against Reverse Red. Oh, see, no. the execution was flawless. See Triple G trying to capture the survival point. Not that it means anything to them. Ray. Okay. But who was there on that revival point, though? Uh, Jeff. I think they got a shot onto someone. Was trying to go for a team revive. Well, God bless that guy's soul. Hopefully, he finds his team right back in here. But in the meantime, expand. Sending out a UAV. Very smart trajectory for the UAV. Scanning out the position in front of them. But they use the portal go to get in front of the UAV, which makes no sense at all. But we'll just work with it. Reverse red against. Expand again. This time, not in the final circle. Cost the oh. first pose attack. That's less than half. And Kramen KS sensing something in the wind. As reverse red. Again, you can see Sami perched up on top. Exposi under a lot of pressure. And Sami brought called in to provide some reinforcements. But the circle is the blue. Does not make contact with Expand just yet. Putting them on the edge, but not enough to threaten them. Hmm. Yeah, ice grenade does push, I believe, Axel down to the ground floor and expand. Ready to take on this fight. It's Crime and KS against Diamond. Diamond able to take refuge on the second floor. Yeah, loose tags here by Diamond. RGS. The explosion does find the connection, but not enough to knock the player down just yet. Nameless does have the bison to save himself in a pinch. Quickly cuts down the distance circle now, hurting both the teams here. Expand needs to move right behind. Evo's Divine could just be the interference that serves up to be the bad luck of one of these two teams. Dew finds Nero off screen. PE spots in a lot of trouble as Stalwart stumbles upon them. But Expand still trying to find a way out of this sticky situation as well as encounter with Reverse Red. And the wrap around the corner. This actually Ray is nearby. Crime and KS might be able to catch a flank though. If, if Reverse Red Ooh, nice is not one. aware of this. Actually taking the portal, able to get away in time. Now onto the high ground in the circle as well. Turning oh, it around my. against Reverse Red. And this time Reverse Red will be, not be able to pull the smoke to the mirrors. IDS yeah. also making the rotation with the vehicle. But it's the move for Reverse Red. It seems like for them, they'll have to kind of take the long road. Yeah, Reverse Red could not catch Expand. And I have to say, big IQ plays from Expand. Stalwart taken out. This is... Uh, very interesting turn of events here for Stalwart Esports, who was pretty dominant earlier. That was two. That's two rounds in a row where Stalwart get got wiped like what in seventh, eighth spot. Yeah. Seems like so, reverse red. They've caught up to expand. Now. You saw the knock. I believe Diamond got the knock onto Axel. No confirmed eliminations yet, but soon to happen. X Roy to fight Exposey first. That is the front head, the front man that you need to take down. But Diamond responds in kind, and oh, wow. seems like could not overcome them. And Liam decides to spoil the fun with that name and expand. The world of her coach you decides to join in. Cobra and X-Roy gets back up only to get knocked down again. And Liam, the Terminator, the Executor, and the Annihilator of both expand. And Reverse Red to follow. <laughs> I cannot believe what we just watched. Those names were absolutely spicy. Leem just wrecking them. Neither one of those teams expected Indostars to show up in such a dominant fashion. And Indostars just wiped the floor with both of them. Reverse Red losing yet another. And they get taken out in the seventh spot. At the very least, Expand can smile a little bit that they were, I guess, a tad bit of a cause for Reverse Red getting eliminated early. But they went down too. Homeboys also back to the lobby, they go. Wow, IDS getting revenge on the team that caused 
both teams that caused them pain last uh, last round. Mm -hmm. And C Triple G, I believe, finds the wipeout onto RQ. Kazu, we're down to the final four Ooh. teams. I, it, dude, Indostars is the second worst team when it comes to the performance on Purgatory. Out of four games played, they've only walked away with a total of 21 points, which means an average of 5.3 points. They have got double of that just in eliminations thus far. They're about to break that record in just one round, AJ. Uh, that's good on them, man. I mean, everybody needs to step up somehow at some place, and Indostar's just choosing to make Purgatory that place. PE Sports still surviving as well. This is a fantastic opportunity for us to bring the camera over to the Vietnam desk later on, so you know exactly where my vote is going. Oh, yeah. You, you know what I'm here for, AJ. We <laughs> both know. The hor <laughs> We're here for the, for the Vietnam team. Getting a booyah. I mean, PE Sports, so far so good, right? They, You said that they can't have another round yeah. where they underperform, where they get knocked out early. Oh, this game is getting ever so close. Hong An will need a bit of help. C Triple G encroaching. PE Sports will have to receive this hit and see if they can overcome C Triple G. But first, they also got to deal with Evo's Divine. Well, this is not part of the plan. Two mm -hmm. fights on both dif on different ends. LBT just overwhelmed with a sure amount of force. And look at this a crunch. Two teams unintentionally oh. taking out PE Esports one by one, and there's nothing that they could do. Evo's Divine in the front line, and C Triple G just providing all these bombardments from afar and letting Evo's Divine clean up the rest. Okay, but now C Triple G might just get confused yeah, as to exactly who to aim all of their shots towards. They now start tagging up A backs. They lay out the glue wall melter here. PE Sports just staying at the very edge of the circle. At the very least, they're on the right side of the circle. And Evo's Divine will have to deal with PE Sports as C Triple G makes that exit using the go portal to go towards the opposite side of the safe zone. Evo's Divine, eight eliminations already. Get their tags in. And two players down on the ground. C Triple G from the opposite side manages to hit down onto Evo's Divine. Helping out PE Sports. And PE Sports somehow still survives. With Evo's Divine being the victim. Come on, in those IDS joins the fray. Uh oh, PE Sports actually able to make a rotation away. This could be the game winning rotation. Oh, Never oh, don't cry. Still spotted out yet. You're not, <laughs> nope, nope, not driving into ideas like that. Well, not, not this time, I guess. Very good attempt, but that truck was just way too slow. Oh. IDS against C Triple G in the final circle. With both the casters on the side of PE Sports, that was so unfortunate. In the stars, though, from getting so close to actually getting the job done this time round, can they take down C Triple G, who's working their way back up to that second spot? Kochil trying to hold this on for himself, and he does manage to find Peter. Peter down on the ground, and now the numbers on the side of Indostars. ATD backs away, has got the opportunity, but look at Koskyu. He drives away with the monster truck, but nothing much comes off of that Indostars wrecking C Triple G, and they walk away with a booyah as well. The uncontested. I mean, for this game, wow, what a performance from these teams. Even PE Sports oh, yeah. able to survive uh, until the very bitter end, but. At the end of the day, this C Triple G and IDS fight uh, could not have been any more intense. IDS, you, we, we kind of discussed a little bit about oh, mm. IDS, it was divine, and how close they are to expand. It's a three way race. And in this round, I mean, IDS putting ahead. I mean, once again, Indostars in totality have only managed to walk away with 21 points. And please let me repeat these 21 points came across four games played at Purgatory. It's safe to say that they have absolutely shattered that record with just one game here. Good on them. They desperately needed to climb up after kind of struggling in that game at Bermuda. They did manage to get into that final circle. They did walk away with that second spot. Nine placement points, but just not enough eliminations. They proved that they were no slouches. They picked up solid eliminations this time at Purgatory just to equalize the performance for the day. So this is a fantastic start overall for the team on day seven yeah you, you would think that you know for uh, for a team like IDS if you compare them to the rest of the teams from Indonesia they definitely are not touted as the best at least not at the start but right now they are the ones that is really carrying the flag of the the oh, region yes. right they're outperforming RQ Kazu they're mm -hmm. outperforming Onyx Olympus that is for a fact and now uh, potentially overtaking EVOS Divine this team that was formed less than two years ago is really making waves.
They why United is absolutely annoyed that you didn't mention them, man. They're like, hey, they, what, <laughs> what about us? Are they outperforming us? <laughs> yeah, they you are. bet they are. <laughs> I'm sure I didn't need to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> they was like, AJ, you could have left us out, man. We we just missed that one. We didn't have to get dragged into this story. But, you know, Day Y United, they definitely need to step it up. Unfortunately, we don't get to see if they do today. They are in Group C. They will obviously wait for their performance tomorrow. But, of course, Team Flash once again had a decent enough start, but just could not continue in towards that fourth circle. Uh, it's a... Honestly, I think Foam Boys just lost in the firefight. Very unfortunate. Even in the final fight, I legitimately thought that, you know, c G is going to have a decent time. But then again, it was a battle for attrition and c G. they just took on way too many fights. And at the end of the day, IDS were biding their time, you know, just sharpening their fangs, found the perfect opportunity to test c G off guard and finish them off. I, I really like the fact that Indostars just stayed hidden through all of that chaos that was initially breaking down between C, Triple G, PE, as well as... Who was the third team again? Geo. Uh, C, Triple G, IDS, uh, PE Sports. Whoever they... Whoever they were. Uh, was it IDS? He was divine. Was the, the, he was divine, yes. He was, he divine, was divine, yes. He was divine. And when all three of these teams were doing battle, in the start, they said, <laughs> carry on, we'll meet you guys later. That was really, really smart of them. Not tossing in grenades, not going in for cheap shots, right? Because you know that you can definitely third party that situation, or fourth party, I have to say, and walk away with easy eliminations. But they were not aiming for a couple of points. They were aiming for the booyah in itself. They stayed hidden just like what they did on Bermuda. So we know for a fact that they are re very, very smart in terms of playing the game of survival. And that's exactly what gets you to the top. That's what they did in the previous round as well, but this time with the full team. Well, we want to listen to what Indostars have to say. Let's toss it over to the Indonesia side to listen to the winners interview. Everyone, booyah for Indostars! Woo! I'm so excited to see a good performance from Indostars today. So, hi Ras. Hi Kak. I want to talk to you. What's your preparation for this week? Apa persiapan kamu untuk minggu ini? Persiapan dari tim Indostar tuh lebih ke arah ini sih, setup, setup baru gitu. Jadi kayak aku tuh ditugasin buat kayak di belakang gitu. Itu sih, udah. Uh, so the Indo Star team preparation is more for this setup and I was assigned as the back support. Okay, I trash you, Russ. And what's your favorite map and why? Apa uh, map favorite kamu dan kenapa? Map Alpine. Soalnya mapnya kecil kan, terus rotasinya juga lebih dekat ke zona. Apalagi zona Alpine kan nggak jauh-jauh dekat Militia, sama nggak rumah lima dekat Militia sih. Okay, dekat sama Militia ya? Iya. Yeah. Alpine. Okay, my favorite map is Alpine because it is so small and the zone is really close to the places. Okay, um, are you optimistic to conquer Thailand domination? Kamu optimis nggak uh, bakal menaklukkan dominasi tim Thailand? Harusnya uh, optimis sih. We should be optimistic to conquer uh, Thailand's domination. Last but not least, what do you want to say to the Thailand team? Apa yang mau kamu sampaikan ke tim Thailand, semua tim Thailand? Kroco. Oh my god. Kroco. Kroco or what a ballak. <laughs> so thank you so much and good luck uh, for the next round because we still have a long way to go. So. We are ready for the next round. Back to you, Chef Castle. I don't even know if I want to break down that conversation, but whatever <laughs> no, it is, Indostars back to back, they've had their their efforts thrown in and they've walked away with some fantastic results. Perhaps not as many eliminations in Bermuda, but they sure as hell made up for it here in Purgatory. And I expect this exact same performance through the next four games that we play as well. 
Indo Stars have been making a lot of miracles happen. Even prior yeah. to you know this uh, FWS Southeast Asia tournament, mm -hmm. they have defied expectations by taking on teams like Thorat in a previous installment, in a, in a previous regional stage that they were on. So I'd say IDS started as what G R C Aphrodite uh, touted as the lowest ranking team when they played in FFSI last year. And now you fast forward less than a year later, here they are outperforming oh, yeah. every single, every other Indonesian representatives. Can you believe it? Yeah, and because it is so close between the fifth to the eighth spot, a super decent performance from Indostars should make them jump up the overall leader leaderboard quite a bit. And I would not be surprised if they do manage to slide into that sixth place. And obviously, attack all around is not going to be too happy with that. We take a look at the eliminations here. What is this? 6, 10, 15 eliminations. A solid one from Indonesia. I, I, I just did not expect this. After Bermuda, I expected, you know, pretty decent survival skills to get on in there. But this is some heavy firepower victory here for Indostars. Yeah, the fact that a couple of their players took Joseph as well. Every time you take, when you take damage, you essentially run faster. Mm. Uh, this, I think, has allowed Indo Stars to fight a bit more efficiently, especially in the final circle, right? Your maneuverability does depend on how fast you can reposition. Perhaps that character is the, kind of the secret sauce to IDS. Nonetheless, Elimination Leaders is still one more with the mm. most eight under his belt, followed by Nameless with six, Hoju with five, 18 Deer and Cost Kill getting four each. Yeah, good for one more. He continues to make his way on the overall leaderboard towards the top when it comes to the eliminations. But of course, he has quite a bit to do to catch up to On Fire that has got 62. In fact, actually, no, he just needs three more eliminations to catch up with On Fire. He's currently sitting at 59, so good on him. 10 knockdowns, one more once again takes the spotlight here for himself. Followed by Hao Ang with the two rescues that he did manage to execute out there for his team members, helping PE Sports stay alive a little bit longer to get into that final circle. One more takes the stage once more with a survival time of 953 seconds. I don't like doing a lot of maths. You guys can calculate this yourself as to how many minutes this was. And P is narrow with the blue wall destroyer medal this time round. And this the most top three weapons, in fact, for this round. Still the same as the previous match. We have, you know, the Bison as the most used one with 15 eliminations. Trogon getting eight. The AWM as well, getting eight eliminations in total. So that we definitely have moved to the Bison compared to the Charge Buster. It's a mm. breath of fresh air, has been the case for quite some time, but we are really seeing the impact of the Bison uh, from even the early stage of the game until the very late stage of the game. Yeah, Charge Buster definitely outputs more damage but you really need to be well skilled with it. The timing needs to be perfect. Bison, on the other hand, you just pray, spray and pray, and most of the times, your prayer, uh, your prayer is answered. And it looks like the Indonesians have had their prayers answered as well. 27 points. Once again, the last time they played Purgatory, the last four times they played Purgatory, it was not good on them. They managed to walk away with a 21 points in total. So this one game alone outperforms every single one of those games put together. See Triple G right behind them with a solid performance of 23 points. PE Sports, we needed them to step up and step up they did. They are now no longer on that 12th spot able to kind of reclaim that their their spot in the 12th place a uh, 12th place and i think the best part is that they are slowly pulling ahead because heavy and GOW were not showing up at all and this is going to give PE sports a more comfortable cushion in that top 12 but when you look at the standings IDS they huh? are now in fifth place overtaking evils divine after that round just a stellar performance it could not have come at a better timing Apologies, PE Sports still in the 12th spot, all thanks to RRQ that has managed to walk away with the extra 7. So they get 244. Looks like PE needs to hustle a tad bit more. Expand, dropping in ranks as Indostars doesn't take the 6th spot, they take the 5th place here with 321 points. That, that's a little insane. Just with one game, Indostars, this has to be quite the adrenaline pump for them. Yeah, definitely. I mean, from, from the first game, even though they uh, had this very, uh, this low elimination count, but they were able to kind of sneak in a second place finish, right? And then come Purgatory, we talk about how Purgatory is one of their worst performing map, and here yeah. they are with the Booyah taking down powerhouses like C Triple G, and they use the exact same strategy. We just bide our time and let everyone duke it out on their own, 
and then uh, we will come in to clean up when the match is almost done. Absolutely, man. But of course, let's see if they can continue to clean up when we get back from a break. It's going to be five minutes. We'll see you guys in a little bit. Make sure you don't go anywhere. How'd you like them apples?
How'd you like them apples? Welcome back survivors to the Free Fire World Series Southeast Asia Regional Stage. It's week three, day one, and you're here with the both of us. It's Husky and Mustachio AJ. And it looks like Indo Stars want to be the number one team by the end of today, and they're halfway there already, right? 40 points. Their only adversary is Reverse Red, as when it comes to the contest for that number one spot. Right behind them is Expand with 30 points, although it doesn't actually look like that. Expand kind of got taken out a little bit early, which does in fact speak for how dominant their run was on Bermuda. Yeah, I mean, even for Expand, after that game, they I believe they are placed in 8th uh, place. Yeah. But it's, they're like, what, 10 points away from tying up with Attack all around, which yeah. is not pay, playing today. So for Expand, it's not the worst, just very unfortunate that the Purgatory didn't go their way. But for Indo Stars, they definitely are starting to put themselves within a touching distance of yes. Star Wars Esports, who has had so far two mediocre rounds at best. I mean, Stalwart surprisingly has been slowly slipping down, but they don't really have a lot to do when it comes to the game of catching up, right? They're just nine points behind Reverse Red. I mean, I would have expected that gap to be a little bit bigger because Reverse Red was pretty dominant all from the start of today. So Stalwart Esports being nine points behind them from overtaking doesn't really worry me all that too much. My biggest question is, will Indostars actually do the unthinkable? Because Indostars, the gap that they have between themselves, they're currently in fifth, to the fourth spot stalwart is 66 points, which is massive. If they bridge that today, which I think is impossible, I will legit lose my mind. If Indostars even get close enough to bring it down to a single digit gap, I think that is already more than impressive, right? Oh, uh, but yeah. they also just overcame one of their worst performing maps. Uh, I think today in those stars are just feeling really good about themselves. Mm -hmm. And then you look at teams like CGG, you know, them in reverse rate, I expected the point gap to be a bit more, but it yeah. really feels like at least for the first two rounds, you know, the uh, the Thai team, CGG, reverse rate, and Star Wars Esports are not really in the groove just yet, despite, you know, C, uh, uh, CGG, Solve, you know, being able to walk away with decent points. I'd say at the end, the winner is IDS. I mean, this is going to be a potential day that Indostars never forgets. We are talking about them having to make a mad dash, closing in for that 66 points, overtaking stall with esports. And for that to happen, they need to get a map where they're proficient at. They just took a booyah on a map that they are absolutely terrible at and that has put them in a great position. But now we walk in where we see Indostars as one of the top three. Now look, Buriram and Attack All Around is not playing. When you compare groups A and B alone, Indostars is your number one performing team on Alpine, followed by CGG as well as EVOS Divine. If anything, this is the best case scenario for Indostars. And at the same time, just now during the winners interview, they also said that Alpine is their favorite map by far yes. because it is one of the smallest maps and it's easier to make rotations. And judging by how Indo stars have been moving around the map, I truly believe that there's a reason why they like this map the most. It does help them with the movements and for a team that doesn't really want to uh, con consistently participate in three, four way fights, yep. being able to get into position earlier uh, does help the case. They have performed on their worst map. They are now in... They, they can see. They can see the fourth spot right in front of them. Yeah. They're heading on into their best map. They're heading into their most favorite map. This is Alpine, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, kicking off in a little bit. Now, the biggest question I have is, will the flight path be kind to them? With such a small map, the only way for you, for the flight path to kind of show you off if it's a, it's a horizontal one. Right, vertical flight path, uh, flight, flight path is amazing for Alpine. You can see uh, if any of these teams will make adjustments to where they want to start off the first few minutes of the game, where they want to move, and it also comes down to where the IDS in particular are feeling coming into this map. They are off of a high, and now you gotta maintain that momentum. And flight path, 
fairly, fairly, ah, uh, fairly, fairly generous, I'd say. IDS, yeah. they won't have to rush it this time. Couple of teams dropping early already. Team Flash taking the safest possible drop. Mm. Uh, Evil's Divine towards the very south end, and I can see IDS also dropping out as well. I'm not going very for a comfortable split, with. Sorry, Husky. Going for a split, I say. Uh, not very comfortable with Flash taking a early drop at the very edge of the circle. Rotations have always been their weak point, and this just means they have to rotate long way around. Team Heavy is just one of those teams that has not been in performance quite a bit today, and they start things off absolutely hot, shutting down the players on the side of Homeboys. A butterfly flying in the air, and Heavy will not have it, and Homeboys have gone home. Doesn't feel good when your uh, playtime is less than a minute. <laughs> Spend the next I did 15, not notice just, that. I spend the next 15 minutes just watching the game. <laughs> oh boy, that is uh, very unfortunate, I'd say. Just you know, running into heavy this early on and just completely outgunned. Yeah. I think you can, you can see that homeboys are, were not ready at all to take on heavy. I... <laughs> I I have I'm speechless. See, Homeboys is technically under Axis Esports, and with a collaboration with Homeboys, Homeboys have of course uh, given uh, taken over this particular team, put their brand on it. I don't think the brand is going to be too pleased with the performance of the team at this point of time because it has been absolutely horrendous. Sort of makes you wonder uh, how 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 are we at this point in Oi. time? And uh, we still have not seen access on the regional stage. <laughs> Ready sports. Uh, taking a good a hit. we we'll walk away with one solid point. Diamond gets one for himself as well. COW pulls down and out in the 11th spot. A little bit too late, dude. One minute. The first minute we lose one team. The second minute we lose another. GOW following homeboys in terms of performance. Absolutely abysmal. Now, Expand might just be able to send the third team home here on the third minute, unless, of course, Evos Des Moines pulls a Uno reverse on them. Axel being very patient. This could be the difference maker. And he is also not threatened as well. Troy is, though. Abax finds it. Oh no, on the high ground. Not according to plan. Abax was actually coming in from behind. But in the meantime, what? that's why I just got found by Kochu IDS on the hunt. You can see, actually, Stalwart, they are scattered around this area. Stalwart is having a terrible start here for the day. They've lost a player already. Instant revive. And the UAV scans them out as well. So this just makes things a little bit more terrible. Axel brings Roy back. Cobra gets taken down by Ray. He was divine. Hitting that Uno reverse crime down on the ground as well. Axel follows suit, but x Roy, the survivor, says, Hasta la vista, baby, gets out of there to keep the team alive. No choice, you gotta abandon the ship. The fact that they lost Roy so early on uh, was definitely a bit of a heartbreak because Axel has such a good position. Speaking of that, he was divine. Still not done just yet, but this time it's C Triple G who has the advantage. Look at one more position. He is so high up. Might have to take that portal though to join his team. I don't think he can cover that much of a distance. On fire, uh, he has already at least trapped two of the members from the side of Evo's Divine. Triple G on fire, first one, then Abax, with a lot of pressure. Two versus one on fire and Koskyu corralling behind this blue one. Abax the first to fall. Yeah, C Triple G, they heard those gunshots too. Portal goes used to get themselves sneakily into Forest Red and instantly shutting down one player from the side of Evo's Divide. Now C Triple G on the hunt. But it looks like they managed to find the second. Then the third player as well. Foscue finds Aim God instantly puts him down. But Ray is still alive. The hope and dreams for the team brings Gade back in. Evos Divine hanging on with the two players. Look at that IDS. Just completely wiping the floor with Stalwart. They picked up three oh, yeah. points just off of that. I mean, 18 dear. I feel like he knows where Dew is. He just couldn't get a good angle on that. Roy goes down. And could that be the elimination here of Team Expand, or was there a revival? Nine teams out. Sorry, nine teams still left here. It's three taken out of the equation, and Expand huh? is that third team. A little unfortunate. Alpine is one of their better maps, and they just are not making that seem here on the SEA stage. No. Uh, after a hot game one, it was it's just continued to go downhill. 
game two and three. Kind of a, to a certain extent, sort of expected, but still, you know, this is definitely not a good way to start off Alpine, which to a certain extent is also one of the maps that they are comfortable on. Playing field is, does get thinned down though. Three teams wiped out very early on. Heavy has five eliminations already. Mm. Pretty heavy in terms of performance from him. Let's see from them, I have to say. Let's see if they can pick up a few more for themselves because Heavy hasn't been having the greatest of days out there. The whole day today, through the two matches played, Heavy is one of those bottom riding teams with a total of seven points picked up. So that's an average of 3.5 points. So this, this game alone supersedes that. I actually got a shot to Legolov. Team Flash on the other hand. I guess Heavy. RQ Kazu falling in the hands of uh, of PE Sports. Heavy on the other hand, I guess Team Flash. Yeah, I mean, I think Jonah, Jonah off guard. And Jonah nice. was the one who was shooting at Team Flash early on. Seems like Heavy wants to take this on. Kabi from the other end, which means that uh, B-Boy needs to hold off Team Flash all of his own. Trying to come in through the window. Overwhelmed. Doesn't feel like that is the play, but Hans perhaps can save his buddy or at least salvage some some points for his team. Pressure on the bottom floor by Shin, oh. and that's just too much pressure. Yep, Jonah, who got revived, is on the way back in. Well, fingers crossed he doesn't drop back in the exact same spot. Team Flash, one of their better performances, shutting down Team Heavy. Five eliminations. I was just about to say they are off to a fantastic start using Alpine as that launch pad, but instantly that came to an end. Now Flash trying to get the exact same thing done to Evo's Divine, and it looks like the final play of Heavy is just a stone throw away. Go on the run, buddy. Keep that keep that run alive. Team Flash now have to face off against Evo's Divine. The second layer of a challenge. Doesn't seem like they have much in the tank left though. Artemis uh -oh. and Yanbin already dropped. Ah, this should be easy clean up. Shin, the third to fall, and Volley not even in a position to help, let alone participate. Do you want to take see. that portal to get away? I don't see it doesn't feel like that's possible though. Aim guard is looking for him. I think they found him. Oi. Volley, do you don't you have money, son? It's the first third three circles, and it looks like Volley is absolutely broke. And out he goes. No elimination, though. It looks like there was a revival then. Yeah, I think someone got revived. Maybe it was Volley. And the last of his savings to keep Team Flash in this game. Yeah. Damage leader-wise, Aim God. Uh, miles ahead of everyone else. 1,600 total damage dealt. Uh, he's off to a fantastic start. Reverse Red, on the other hand. Two eliminations. Both taken by Diamond earlier on. And they are still on the hunt for more points, but they just don't seem to be coming across anyone just yet. Playing it slow, waiting, biding their time before they find the next safe zone. Especially when they are standing and stalwarts are so close. And speaking of stalwarts, they actually got found by ideas again, and Legolov hunted down by Nero. That's the fifth point for PE Sports. And off screen again, stalwart up against IDS. It seems like IDS is not just a threat, it is an inevitability as Raz hunts down Cypher, but at least Dew gets a trade back from the bridge. Keeping stalwart he's a float oh, in this wow. engagement, and Caramel showing up big time to take out 18 Deer. IDS facing their first major loss against stalwart, and this is uh, just recovery. That's a huge GG. I mean, Stalwart has been pounded but one more time, time and again. I have no idea what am I saying, but Stalwart has been absolutely tortured by Indostars from the time he started off this game. And that swift maneuver, they pulled out the Uno reverse against them. But with one final survivor, the revival is there. Indostars continues to survive. Question is, with the lack of loot on them, can they get into that final circle yet again to keep their momentum up? It's definitely going to be the toughest round for IDS. They don't really have much left, and I don't even think the whole team is back. They probably have enough to bring mm. back one or two members, but definitely not the full squad. I say that Raz just did it. 
Probably found some coins along the way. So IDS, <laughs> well, full squad is back, but we're at the 10 minute mark, right, AJ? So yeah. there really isn't much time left for IDS to get ready for the final fight. It's a small map. Encountering teams. Uh, it's a very high probability here. 10 minutes in. And more minutes left. RRQ to play is right up on top. Uh, cheeky play. Let's see if this one serves them up well. Ah, they've been found out already. And a couple of shots down from the bottom. Nothing takes them out just yet. And all with every single player has been revived thus far. But this is a fantastic recovery on their side. And you can't blame RQ as well. They have been hunted down by PE Sports the entire game. Oh, yeah. It's only a matter of time where the lap luck runs out. Diamond Triple cashes kill. in on his third elimination onto Razor. Let's see if Evo's Divine now can survive this particular encounter. Team Flash right in front of them. Reverse Red! Man, this is take Yan Bin out of the equation. And the rest of Team Flash is on the other side between themselves as well as Team Flash stands. Evo's Divine. So Evo's Divine is not in a great spot at all. Yan Bin gets instantly purchased back in. There was a vending machine there for use. So not a lot lost here for Team Flash. They just have to hang on. That's so weird. Evo's Divine in the middle and it's Yanbin who gets finished off. Uh, talk about long shots. UAE was sent out though, Reverse Red. How are you going to deal with this? The Riptide Rhythm is going to slightly expose Gadei and one Why? shot from Nameless. The follow-up is impeccable from this man, Saming. Now needs one of his own, but Exposey already got the job done with that grenade launcher. Pushing forward this time. It's going to be two behind the wall and Exposey merciless against Team Flash. Volley, do you want to get away? He's just trying to protect your teammate. Seems like he's going to get pushed. Glue walls being erected. Volley has to retreat. Uh, and they have managed to slow things down just a tad bit. Artemis with the pickup. Shin back on his feet. No grenades to take them out just yet, Exposey. Oh, they uh, got blue away. Wall melter. Diamond is chasing! Diamond is alone against three people. This man is actually crazy. Let's see if he actually makes something out of this craziness. Oh, hi, Saming! Finally pulls a shot off. Good aim! What? Saming! I mean, he took three years to take the previous shot. And his teammate helped him out with that exposi, but this time around didn't waste a single second. Hits a fantastic knockdown and follows it up with a bison as well. Two for Saming. What an adjustment with that shot onto Ray. I thought Gadei was only going to be just one, but Saming, the transfer onto, onto Ray, the moment he touched down, this man is as sharp as ever. Now Volley back in the fight. He was divine part of the equation also. Three ways between ties. Uh -oh. The Viet and the Indo. Uh -oh. And the Shin getting knocked down. Artemis finished off by Ray himself. I don't know if PE Esports should continue playing this monster truck meta because the monster truck is super slow. Granted, it does get to mow down all of the glue walls in front of them, but it hasn't really served them very well just yet. And the snipers can very easily snipe them out. So I'm just wondering exactly how they're going to turn things around. Reverse Red finds the final player on the side of Flash, and they make a flashy exit for sure. See Triple G circling around, missing that blue zone on fire down already. He didn't expect that. Stalwart hitting them from the back. Uh, getting a bit messy. 14 minutes in, still seven teams left. It's C Triple G against Evos Divine, Im God and Ray, side by side with the glue wall melter to try and at least get rid of some of the glue walls. Just making his shots hard. What, five blue wall mounters in total? A Cypher off screen takes out uh, our IDS members, but one more with a six shot onto Caramel. That one is gonna take him out for sure. No contest. Aim God also drops. As the Star Wars goes for the revive, PE Sports on the other hand, they themselves need to fend off reverse spray. This Exposey right in front of them. As the fight just erupting on every corner of the map. How is Nero gonna do this? Try to go for the push onto Wong Ang, but you have to be very careful though. As they try to push into Saming, Saming trying to walk, run circles around and somehow still ends up going down. As Exposey oh. takes out LBT and it's Exposey again. 
to save reverse red. Yeah, BE Sports desperately wanted to climb up the leaderboard and overtake RRQ Kazu, but RRQ Kazu survived just one ranking above them. The question Diamond. is, will the eliminations help them out? Reverse red out of the equation as well. C Triple G did the impossible, went back into the second spot, but can they now close down on Buriram Esports? They need 70 points to catch up, and they are hanging on for their dear lives. They desperately won this booyah for themselves, but Stalwart is a great contender on the opposite side of the field. And Stalwart revived in this round. Cypher does get knocked down on the plate. It's very unfortunate though. Oh, Duo also needs to start hitting up Circle. Oh. It's gonna hurt. C Triple G is one more in cost queue against Ray on one end and Stalwart on the other. Stop making quick progress. I believe one of the members from Stalwart also got taken mm. out. So now this fight is even more fair. And Stop, he's actually prone now. Heading towards Ray's position. Oh, this could be disastrous for Evo's Divine. Caramel oh, nice. keeping watch on the, the far right. And Ray, unfortunately, ambushed by Stop. Now it's just a battle of the Thai teams. It's C Triple G against Stalwart. As a miss there by Ray. It's a 2v2 though for the Booyah. Stalwart versus C Triple G. The blue wall melter tossed out first to take down the defenses of C Triple G. Stop with a backstab. Charge Busters just not finding those connections. One more. Half his HP. Huh? Cost you hurt as well. They have to hang on. But can they? Now Stop has a lot of work to do. Takes out one more for one for one. His team against Cost you. Charge Buster in hand. Stop from the left. Blue wall just in time. Whoa. No room to breathe oh! though. Cost you with the flick. And it's C Triple G. To know in the Booyah, the first of the day. What a crazy run here by C Triple G. They climbed up. They're doing better than Reverse Red as well as Forward. And they are back on the race for the number one spot. They did manage to sneak into the second spot before we started off this match. And now, once again, a Booyah to their name. Should be able to cut down the gap now from 70 to about 40-ish. We've got three more games to go. Very, very doable for C Triple G by the end of the day. Yeah, especially, you know, they smell reverse red and stalwart catching up, and they want to make sure that that will not be the case. Uh -huh. Final fight against stalwart. I mean, first of all, a uh, big props to stalwart for being able to hold on that long and bring, bringing it down to one v one. But cost kills, the clutch at the very end uh, was just fantastic. But we have to, of course, give props to Stalwart Esports as well. Tortured at the start of this game, full team had to go on a revival run, dropped on and looked for their loot, found that perfect recovery, picked up all of those coins once again to buy themselves insurance policies, got into that final circle and still managed to make a great stand against C Triple G. The one mistake was their slow movements in playing, teasing the blue zone. And when it was close towards that final circle already, the blue zone hurt a little bit too much. It helped them get eliminated a little too early. If only they hadn't dropped that third player, things could have been so different. But of course, that's exactly what everybody who does not walk away with a booyah would want to say. At the end of the day, the team that made the better decisions, C Triple G, truly deserved the victory. I completely agree with that. I think Stalwart would have had the full team for that final fight, if not for the blue zone, right? One of their mm. members fell to the blue zone and then another one got picked off by C Triple G as they were progressing forward. And I I'd say, you know, a bit of an oversight, but still being able to make it that far and bring it down to a 1v1 when you are you yourself are in a 1v2 is uh, more than impressive, especially against a team like C Triple G. But this one, I love it. The shot from Saming was just uh, beautiful, but very unfortunate uh, for Reverse Trade. They couldn't make it further than that. They had great plays from PE Sports as well. I mean, they had decent number of eliminations as they made their way in towards that fourth circle. Of course, things did come crashing down here as they got into a tussle with Reverse Red, but they got taken out with the nine eliminations on their side. So that was a more than enough performance from PE Sports to make the dash towards that 11th spot. RRQ Kazu, who did survive just one position, you know, more than them, could have just made the difference there with that play. RQ Kazu also had a very, very rough round. The entire match was just got gunned down by PE Sports. And when they finally thought that they were in the clear, 
and they realize that they don't really have much to work with. Yeah. Push on top of billboards, scattered around the map, and just getting hunted down by every single team that they come across. Well, we will need to hear exactly what the Thai players have got to say to us. So let's throw this back to the Thai desk to hear exactly what questions our interviewer has for them. Yay, yay, guys! And Emery Sid, CGGD! Hello, I'm from CG Coach Q. Coach Q, how do you feel today? How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Good and getting better. Okay, what happened in the first two games? Why it came out like that? Good, like two games. Why? 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 Mm. Oh, it's part of it and we always fail at those maps. So, which map is your team most favorite to play? Lau, lau team chop map mai ma disu. Next Terra. Next Terra. Next Terra. So we can hope your team CDG get the buya in Next Terra, right? Lau khát vọng đây, chắc là CDG sẽ đạt buya trên map Next Terra. Next Terra. Chắc là, là bên thiếp chào Next Terra rồi. Of course, because we are God of Next Terra. Okay, I like that confident and hope CDG will get Buya on next Terra. So now, are you ready? Are you ready? Home yeah, warm up. <laughs> Them okay. up. Let's get to the next game. Back to you, Shao Caster. <laughs> I can't take it, Aski. She's, she's continuously aiming for his cheeks, man. She's gonna pinch it one day. I'm telling you, they're more than ready. She, they, she's getting closer to those chicks, though. <laughs> but of course, I do have to agree. C Triple G, they are the kings of Next Terra. As far as they are concerned, they are looking to dominate. But we also want to look at the overall leaderboard to see exactly how much they served up C Triple G. Five eliminations for one more, once more, taking the spotlight for himself. This time walking in with Iris, and this is a solid setup. Iris allows you to mark all of your opponents who are behind that blue, uh, behind those blue walls. And as long as they're within that vicinity, those players are marked and they are taken down by your team members, they get extra coins as Susie is played by one more as well. Great setup to make good use of this meta where you do need those free fire coins. Yeah, and I think this is also a callback to FFSI where Iris plus the Awakened Moko was a thing, right? Mm. Uh, very, not much people use, use Iris back then, but it has always been a viable uh, viable combination. It's good to see, yeah. you know, one more kind of bring it back. Uh, teams are definitely, you know, attuned to more different, there are more different styles right now. We don't just see everyone picking, you know, three, four Tatsuyas. I mean, we're seeing the Skylar, we're seeing the Chrono back, we're seeing the Homer, and now the Iris. Uh, is there's definitely a lot more diversity, even though it's so much easier to bring your teammates back. And I think one more really delivered on that front. Even at the very end, he was the one who found you before Stop even had a chance to engage in that final fight. Oh yeah, absolutely. And of course, solid number of eliminations picked up by them as well. Peter walking in with four to his name, cause Q with the two. And of course, we'll have to check in on whether or not CGG can keep up this momentum in Kalahari. We know it's not their best map, but next era should make them bounce right back through. But if they can perform on Kalahari, of course, there's a lot of reason to celebrate. Ray walks away with the elimination leader medal this time around with a six to his name. Dew walks up with that second spot with the exact same number of eliminations. Unfortunately for SDE, the uh, I don't think that whole team performed as good as Dew. No, I think I think Dew, uh, Dew and either Stop or Caramel, either one of them uh, were performing super well. But I think Dew is definitely the top performer of his team, at least for this game. Compared to game one and two, this is definitely so much better, right? And you yeah. finish second place. But our key players for this match, we have Aim God with the most assists, LBT, most uh, most teammates rescued. 
One more, of course, long survival time and deal with the most damage dealt at 3,134. I mean, he was rocking the battlefield out there. I mean, well deserved in terms of domination. We do need to see exactly what that resulted in here for Stalwart Esports because they are trying to catch up with CGG and CGG is just making it more and more difficult for them by hitting that Booyah. The momentum pickup here for the CGG squad is solid, but overall, Thailand is having a great day out there. Woodpecker surprisingly coming in as the number one weapon with the slays in our top three weapon category. Yeah, a lot of long-range snipes this game, right? Uh, we From the early to late game, we have a lot of these players who are just landing shots after shots after shots. Woodpecker and AWM on the list, and when they when it finally comes down to uh, when they finally comes up to the CQC, we're seeing the Bison being pulled out. A couple of charge busters as well, but mainly this game is all about you know getting these long-range pickoffs. And see Triple G after that Booyah and 13 eliminations, clock in 25 points. That's not too bad at all. And of course, Eve was divine with a comeback gameplay here. 14 eliminations, 8 placements for a total of 22. SDE fairly well in terms of performance. Reverse Red is there as well. They are both hot on the tails of CGG. This is a fight for second spot. And CGG is winning it hands down at this point of time. We still have three more games to see if or not this continues to be the case. PE Sports will surely climb the leaderboard a tad bit more. Now breaking away from the 12th spot as they drop RRQ in 10th to take the 9th position for themselves, but only 2 points with the lead. That is also off of a game where they were consistently picking up RQ Kazu's members. And you can see the attack all around, they are pushed down to 7th place, but it's because they're not playing today. And I don't remember when was the last time we, we have a potential of the top 5 teams uh, being tight teams, but this tournament yeah. so far feels like it. But let's see how much Evil's Divine and Ideas can do to pull ahead of Attack all around by the end of today. So far, they're making good progress, right? Yeah. Ideas didn't have the best round this round, and uh, Evil's Divine took the chance to really step up. We're moving to Kalahari next, and this is where the dynamics of the leaderboard might shift for some of these teams. And it most definitely needs to shift for some of these teams who are struggling when it comes to picking up the top 12 spot for themselves. We're talking about teams like Heavy as well as God of Wolf. Um, we can't talk about Homeboy's Conspiracy as well as Team Flash because the story for them needs to be a story that is built over multiple days of play. But for Heavy as well as God of Wolf, they're not too far away. We just need pretty decent plays. I mean, average of... 12 points per game in the final three maps should put Heavy in the top 12. Yeah, I mean, right now, when you look at the multitude of storylines we have, certain teams, they are definitely kind of the main character, right? We are always focusing on them. Uh, teams that are at the bottom, unfortunately, teams like, you know, Flash, Homeboys, uh, Dewa United, Todak, uh, GGW to a certain extent, they feel like filler arcs, right? We, yeah. we gotta see a, lot, a bit more material from them before they can kind of be at the front, the forefront of the conversation. But for Kalahari, at least, the best performing teams are mm. actually BRU, WAG, and Stalwart. Guess what? Stalwart, at least for the day, is considered the best because BRU and WAG are not playing. Oh yeah, absolutely. Stalwart Esports, your number one team on Kalahari as far as Group B as well as A is concerned. When you compare the two groups, Group B is the most dominant as opposed to Group A. You've got four teams on the top uh, four, right? You've got Stalwart, Reverse Red, RRQ Kazu as well as P Esports. You can expect them to make fantastic plays out there. But we also have to lean in a little bit on the momentum as well as the adrenaline pump the teams like C Triple G as well as Indostars have built for themselves. I think these two teams are definitely feeling the best about themselves. Uh, Reverse Red and Stalwart, they had some some moments where they feel like they can do this. I think Evo's Divine also found their group in the previous mm -hmm. game. They had very there are a lot of elimination comes from you know the first 10 minutes of yeah. that match itself. Now it's the team who can maintain it because suddenly we are shifting to Kalahari and it is a map that is so much different, right? The way you traverse the map, the way you take uh, take points in certain angles, and the way you take fights in particular, some areas are by default disadvantaged to you. So these teams, it really tests the understanding of the map and the terrain. And a lot of teams are taking the early draw, like Stalwart, they are going mm. straight up to the northern side. Yeah, Foundation and Old Hampton will be dominated by Stalwart Esports. This is a good reason as to why they keep getting eliminated early and are forced to play those revivals. They're taking full advantage of that pocket market. But at the same time, 
their decision to take the split as well gives them pretty decent amount of loot. I mean, they're looting up two different compounds at the same time here. That's kind of the, the best opening. Look at the crowd that they covered. They took like, what, one-sixth of the map already. Mm. These are the late drops. P.E. Sports and Evos Divine. It's time to battle it out at Council Hall. And for P.E. Sports, the first to drop, but Evos Divine, the first to get a gun at Good Day. Trying to get some numbers in, but uh, oh. not landing this shot. And on the other end, oh my goodness, Team Flash. <laughs> well, they found on fire. This should be a free pickoff. Uh, but do they get it though? I no, what? Oh no, on fire does oh. get dropped. Shin does manage to hit him with that bison. But dude, that was too close. On fire was retaliating. He almost got Shin taken out of the equation there. But a fantastic recovery. It was a 2v1. And all due to that, they do walk away with the first elimination. But as simple as it was to lose on fire, cost you hits that revival. He was divine. Did manage to scan out team... Um, Flash, I believe, at Shrines, the moment they were dropping on in, they knew they had company at P uh, at Council Hall here in the form of PE Sports, but they also wanted to check out the grounds behind them so that they could rotate over if they needed to back away from the team that was hot dropping them. So that is, you know, thinking three steps ahead, I really like what Evos Divine has done in here, and now they've already taken a good command in terms of the position here at this location, and PE Sports are all cornered in. I think even for Team Flash, you have bigger problems to worry about because C G now knows where you I are. They that. might hunt you down. Abex for the first ever shot. Oh, oh my what? God. Was that? What was that? That Dude, was he got homered and he still got that headshot. Illegal 180. What a flick from this man. That that is going to break you if you are PE. Oh yeah. How how impossible that shot was. He just got hit by that homer and he shrugged it off like it was absolutely nothing. Popped up, hit that 180, headshot straight up with that M1014. And of course, that shotgun does hurt up close and personal. He just walked away with a perfect play. Two for two there. Peace or might just meet, might just meet their demise because I, I don't see any revives yet. And they actually mm. found the last member already. We check back at... PE Sports in a little bit. Reverse rate and Mammoth. Uh oh. They find a dandy PE Sports. Oh boy. That's it. This yeah, this round. It's not their round. Completely outclassed. Yeah. They went in there for the hot drop. They and there was just no counterplay whatsoever. And props to the team that demolished them, right? I mean, what a setup in terms of positioning on that. Um, area. There, there was just no way you do not dominate Council Hall once you spread out in that way. And it was just a walk in the park right after they set themselves up. So we'll catch up with them in a bit. In the meantime, Expand looking to talk to the players on the side of GOW. You say that, but GOW with the wraparound. Oh boy. Oh, this could be this could be a big flank. But actually got spotted. I believe Iza. Oh. What was he doing behind Axel? Felt like he could have really made something out of that, but just <laughs> Unfortunately, spotted out by GOW. The idea was great, but not able to pull it off. So, expand. Might have to fall back for now. Crime and Cobra still decide to stick around. They tried to hit Axel with the treatment gun, but was bleeding out faster than they could save him. So, that's a GG right there. And now, RIP. Potentially going to be in a situation where he cannot recover this. Crime MKS does get dropped, though. As Iza does manage huh? to find that backup, Dion with a good execution. R.I.P. hits X Roy, and this just turns south for Team Expand. I mean, it turns out for GOW because Dion executed himself with the grenade launcher. Kill. In fact, it's Expand coming out on top, and Iza has to buy his teammates back and reset. Triple G on the other hand, while well, they found heavy and cost kill with the Trogon to find that win. On fire, also found Jonah as well. Kill. Heavy. Dropping very, very quickly. This could be a wipeout. Hans has nowhere else to go. Just surrounded oh and swapped by the players of C Triple G. But Heavy, I believe, done enough to just keep themselves alive. They have a last minute revive. Courtesy of Hans before he went down. So Heavy are still in the game. Oh, big engagement here for Indostars. But we'll have to hop on back to GOW. This engagement still does go ahead to continue. They just got revived and they're back in the thick of the action, GOW. That took it up. Take a Cobra. Who gets bought back anyways, and Ji Kuang actually saw Crime and KS who dropped down. Kill. Reverse rate on the other hand, finding IDS, not the best start, and reverse rate exacting revenge on the Indonesians. Axel, well, the fight continues between Expand and GOW, both teams trading one apiece.
And it's actually GOW on defense as they are marked for a mark to be hunted down. This is a pretty insane performance from both GOW as well as Expand. A tad bit disappointing in terms of um, Expand's performance because they should be able to just wipe out GOW, theoretically speaking, just purely looking at the numbers on paper. But there was a solid fight by GOW. And if this continues, making it into the top 12 and keeping themselves there should not be a problem at all for the team. Well, expand full team back at the Southern Sub Command Post. Oh, what's conspiracy? So far, untouched. What are they going to go though? It seems like they call off the rotation at least temporarily on fire while uh -oh. finding the Kwang GOW from the from one beast to another. First expand and now see Triple G. Luck mm -hmm. might have just ran out. Deanne trying to run away from Peter, but nobody runs from Peter. Ah, uh, it was a fantastic use of the Homer! But the response to the glue wall was equally as fantastic. Deanne does manage to shut him down either way. Bison straight to the head. Koskyu trades him out with a Trogon and C-Triple-G back in action with the advantage over G-O-W. That is just very unfortunate. G-O-W though, still surviving. Homeboys, on the other hand, mm. now in a pretty tricky spot. Ura. They actually put out the, the portal. They are out of this. Yep. They sent the shot straight up from the Skyler to melt down a couple of those blue walls, but Reverse Red was not behind that. Fires is the information giver. Bird's eye view for him. On top of the sub, and Reverse Red does not want to deal with this sort of an engagement. Not here, as Team Homeboys do have the advantage with that elevation. They back away. Fires have the best possible spot. Pretty sure he saw some of the reverse rate members. As there is a revival point there. And it seems like homeboys they are starting to make some minor advancement towards reverse rate. Idea is not so lucky. This is going to be the survival game, just like round number one. But Stalwart inching so ever so close. Aiden D is trying to hide away. But I don't think he's going to be very lucky here. Stop clearly knows that he's right there. Blue Wall Melters, 18D attacked up already. Has to be forced to pull out the Glue Wall and throw the Glue. It is the M82B in action. Dude had no idea where he was, but he still managed to connect with that shot. All thanks to that marker. Insane shot from Dude. He's a found by C-Triple-G. Miraculously, these teams are still in the game. You know, IDS and GOW, who have sustained so much damage in the early phase, somehow still surviving. He was making the long, long rotation from that uh, eastern side. Stalwart as well, willing to tank the blue <laughs> just for a while. Yeah, two UAV sent their way. Uh, courtesy of Flash and I believe Endostars. Stalwart would just be... The finisher here, Flash, manages to catch Raz, Artemis right behind, and a 3v1 just equals Flash being absolutely annihilated. And Team Flash alive, but perhaps not for long, as Stalwit should be able to intercept their rotation. The IDS wiped out. Uh, th this, this is so crushing. The momentum completely tampered. Oh, Yanbin takes out Saifa. Stop oh, wow. with the reply. Actually, Yanbin going off on SCE. Stalwart losing too, but Dew got to put some pressure on this man. This stall a bit of time because Dew has Whoa! been a menace folly, not letting him get away with that. And oh, Flash, Flash keeps the entire team alive. Might now be looking to finish off Stalwart. I, I never dreamed you would ever say something like that. Flash finishing off Stalwart? Nine eliminate ten eliminations in the hands of Flash. What in the world happened to this team? And where did this performance suddenly come from? And RG has 50 of all weapons to finish off the final player off of Stalwart Esports. Ah, uh, welcome back. Welcome back to competitive Free Fire Flash. We have wow. definitely missed you. I think they're seven points away from overtaking Homeboy's Conspiracy, and that run alone with the eliminations has gotten the job done. So Homeboys are sweating in their pants right now. And if they, if they want to get a Booyah with this run, they will overtake Todak on the leaderboard. But they gotta get to Evil's Divine first though. Uh-oh. Already lost uh, Artemis. Very unfortunate. 
caught out in the open. Abax, okay, no! Volley again replying. This man, the hope and the dreams of Team Flash rest on oh. his shoulders, and Shin also chips in with the nade. And Volley again, just consecutive shots onto the members of Evo's Divine, but he has now been taken down. The torch just passed over to Shin as Volley breathes his last breath. Evo's Divine not wanting Team Flash to run away with this, and unfortunately, this could be too much for Shin alone to handle. Abax, Gade, and Ray Don't surrounding him. Team Flash finished off at ninth place, but still an admirable run by them. I mean, come on, they that they just had my hopes up so high. Uh, it's a tad bit disappointing, but it's okay. That shows that they still have life in them. Heavy, on the other hand, managing to circle right back in and clean up house. Oh, just one elimination. But they will be pretty pleased with that. He was divine. Has managed to back away. All thanks to the portal go. And Ray's gonna try and hope and pray they do not find him. Let's see, so right now, homeboys. What a shot was that fires! How did he just snap onto RIP? Get a free shot for him, a free point for his team, and now the rest. Of GOW finished off. Wow, homeboys catching some stragglers along the way. Yeah, man. Seven points. And as long as Team Homeboys gets about four points here, they should be able to stay in the clear from being overtaken by Team Flash. So, by hook or by crook, they need to stay alive. Legolas from up top. This is a heavy advantage. And he is helped out. By the one and only Razor as well. Legoloth now with yet another team shot. And the grenade follows up suit. Backstab. Han got out of the blue wall. Did not anticipate the shot from up top. And they are just absolutely dominated in the situation. Uh, and okay, Razor and Legoloth still getting pressured by Razor. Able to respond just nice. But from behind, T-Boy with the knock. Legoloth. Oh, Captain. Can you do it? Unfortunately, you missed that shot now. Legoloth. Taking the frontal approach. Really, Legoloth? Hans brought back. Are you going to win Legoloth? Yep, he's out of there. I can't believe he actually just went in there for the finisher. I see the ideation, but I totally do not agree with the decision. He is very lucky that he did manage to get out of that one and cost Q. Nameless down. Perhaps Reverse Red has got their number counter already. Two eliminations from one more. Unfortunately, he can't find one more. 13, 14! And it looks like C Triple G is doing a number here on Reverse Red. Completely, complete annihilation. They did wow. lose one more. But more price to pay to get getting rid of a powerhouse like them. Eliminations leader, of course. 16 elimination, eliminations. Last I remember, last weekend, they were the ones who had to held the most the record for the most points in one round. It seems like they are looking to repeat that or even break it. Homeboys oh conspiracy to take out RRQ Kazu. I am just absolutely shocked with what C Triple G is doing out there. I mean, we all have to remember this is not their best map. In fact, this is one of their worst maps. Kalahari really is not kind to them at all. C Triple G is on a run that we have not seen. No, Kalahari is their worst map. I just double checked. And they have <laughs> 16 eliminations already. And they are on the way to pick up the Booyah as well. And later, when we go into Next Terra, C Triple G is looking to dominate. They are calling themselves the kings of Next Terra. Can C Triple G do this? A back to back to back to take that number one spot back from Buriram Esports, who are not even been playing today put a solid distance between themselves as well as reverse red as well as stalwart esports they are on the way to do exactly that we started off with teams performing on their best map and and then slowly it evolved to teams performing on their worst maps mm. quite a development for today's uh, today's matches the most divine against homeboys this could be the biggest challenge but before that it's going to be heavy in their way and it's light work for ray Good on homeboys for still surviving here. And this survival just means that Team Flash will not be overtaking them in this match. Although they had a super decent round with a solid number of eliminations. 10, I believe. We'll have to catch up with the overall leaderboard later on to see exactly what sort of an impact those 10 eliminations had. But homeboys, they're just going to be holding on here. They don't need those eliminations to stay on. But of course, if they're looking for the top 12, they'll need to chip in those numbers right here, right now. Evo's Divine cutting down the distance. That is just going to be stepping right in between them. G'day. Circling around. B-Boy down and out already. And now, homeboys need to be on standby. 
And then there's no C-Triple-G as well. C-Triple-G though actually took taking out Imgot. This could be beneficial to homeboys. And look at the terrain, it's not kind to them. Any straight grenades is gonna take them out. The reposition from Koskyu. Fi is not in the best spot to provide any support fire. And C-Triple-G, they have the best possible uh, possible spot to take on homeboys. And homeboys know it, they wanna just come command and conquer, overtake C-Triple-G, force them away. Gotta fight for this vantage point, but on fire, what was that peak? And Im got from behind doing Jembao dirty, and that's two homeboys players already down. Butterfly forced to retreat, but nowhere to go. Yeah, I can't even use this homer at this point of time. The A1 to fall on the side of C Triple G needs a little bit, a few more seconds for the recovery. And homeboys, they bite the dust. It's now E Boss Divine in a full squad going up against C Triple G who are down by one man. But that A124 is right back online. Koskyu just waiting for his opportune moment. Peter did get knocked down though. Look at Koskyu behind, <laughs> spotted by Ray. Can Koskyu get out of this? This is a rough spot for him. There's no way out. Koskyu gotta fight his way out. Actually takes out him right with the Judge Buster. This man is a monster. Koskyu from the 20th. Maybe he has done more than enough on fire to join in. And Evo's divine. Crunch from front to back. Wow. And on fire. Might have just done more than enough if Evo's Divine down to their last legs on fire to clean it up. And C Triple G with a monstrous second booyah. A consecutive one to say the least. A back-to-back -back booyah for C Triple G. And oh my lord, what a performance. 20... Dude, you said it, man. They absolutely wrecked house last week, but they did not get 23 eliminations. They only got 22 eliminations. And guess what? They didn't even get the number one spot. They walked away with second. They only took nine points. But now 23 plus the Booyah. C Triple G is absolutely wrecking their opponents. And this is their worst map. Kalahari is their absolute worst. They only have a total of 48 points picked up on Kalahari thus far, and they have knocked the ball right out of the park. What a crazy run by C Triple G. I just want to say, Koskyu is a madman. This guy, oh my goodness, he took the leap of faith. He decided, you know what, I'm going to take the portal, and I alone will infiltrate the back line. And he was spotted on two different angles, tagged down to less than 50 and still was able to win a 1v1 against Ray to buy enough time for On Fire to kind of hop into the firefight and clean up the rest of Evo's Divine. How crazy is that? The display of individual skills from the players of C Triple G is, was what made the difference. Husky, we've got two more games to go. They needed 46 points to overtake Buriram and they just got 35 points just off of Kalahari, which is their worst map. And they have got Next Terra, their best map on standby for game number five. And goodness knows where that random map is gonna drag us into for game six. Holy mama, C Triple G have done the absolute unthinkable. From the fourth spot all the way up to number one, totally possible, outdoing Reverse Red as well as Stalwart Esports. This is just unbelievable. Anywhere else, any other map, I would have said, ah, it's C Triple G. But on their worst map of performance at Kalahari, for them to pull off the best, the very best performance throughout the whole of the knockout stages. Wow, C Triple G, this is insane. Unbelievable. I think they have, they, if, I think when we look at the overall standing later on, there is a good chance that C Triple G are literally one game away oh, yeah. from overtaking Burirab. Yes, they are. They, they, I can tell you right now, my friend, they absolutely are. And they don't even need a booyah to overtake them. Actually, I already know the answer. I was just trying to build suspense for the crowd. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was, I'm looking at the score as well. But yes, Asuki, you're correct. 35 yeah. points. How can they not be literally a stone's throw away, right? That's just insane. Man. I, I cannot believe our eyes. I mean, it, uh. it, and on fire. Uh, he was literally on fire. 11 eliminations at this point alone. And then he raked in the 12th one with the final. 13. And I thought he was done. But the guy said, no, AJ, one more. 13, in he got more than a booyah's worth all on his own in this game. They got 23 eliminations and he had more than half of that. He got 13 out of 23. This guy is an absolute mad lad, honestly. Back then, you would rely on Peter to be the one who do it because Peter yeah. is also yeah. CQC, incredible uh, close quarter combat, but on fire, yes. really stepping up. 
from Game 3, from the previous match when they got the first PF for the day, he has been literally on fire. I've been waiting for the interview segment to be dragged to Vietnam, but I have to say, for this one, I agree. Let's bring it to Thailand. They deserve it. It's C Triple G. I want to hear exactly what they have to say. Okay, guys, it looks like CDG is already on fire. <laughs> Yay! This is on fire from CDG. The first question is Is this a bit late that you correct? The booyah in the third week. Man, cha, be me, ka, ti, lao, le, ma, ba, wa, ke, booyah, lu, lu, na, in, sap, da, ti, sa. Mai, ha, ba, kom, den, chiu, chiu, ha. No, we just chill and slow play. Okay, and what is the key that lead you to the booyah in the last game? Alai, hu, he, sam, kan, ti, tham, he, lao, dai, booyah, na, game, ma, ki, ha. Ben, ba, om, tai, ko, an, ton, game, ma, da, pun, ba, ha. Because, because I was eliminated at the the beginning of the game and all the all of my member carry me. Okay. Uh, so anything you want to say to your fans? Ni la yak fa ting fan fan me ha. Uh, fan share de ap ja tham mi di suan. Please support us. We will do our best. And I'm sure that all of your fans will support you, C V G. Hope you get a better buya in the next game. Ta dai buya game thap pai na ha. Uh. Okay, now back to you, Shoutcaster. I mean, see Triple G just doing the absolute impossible. They are pulling a booty ram today out there on the battlefield. And, you know, we, we were talking about how, you know, apart from booty ram, there are no other teams that dominate all the maps. See Triple G is like, wait a minute, maybe we can be the team as well. Yeah, they, at one point they were in first place for quite well not not them in first place but they have been there for for a while right yeah. uh, BRU if you want to overtake BRU you gotta somehow play like BRU or better than BRU and yes. I think C Triple G despite BRU not playing today people can say that oh you know when BRU joins the field they will eventually uh, be first again but the yeah. fact that C Triple G can pull performances like this does make you think they are not that far behind are they I don't think so Dude, they, they just jumped from being the 8th best team to the number 1 team on Kalahari as far as groups A and B is concerned. That, in, with just one game, is ridiculous. And this guy picking up 13 eliminations with 4,970 damage with 17 knocked... The host got it right. He is on fire! This guy wiped out like four full teams all on his own. Oh, he knocked out four full teams and he wiped out three teams all on his own. It's on fire. It is built different. Oh, and yeah. of course, you, you couldn't do it without the help of Cosq, right? Yes. And you, you said it, you called it just right, AJ. You said, okay, A124 uh, just came back out. Cosq immediately pulls the trigger. He's like, I'm diving in. I, don't, I believe my team will support me. But most importantly, I know I can hold my ground. I'm a big boy. And he completely, completely... Not only caught Evo's Divine off guard, but even damaged them before he went down. That is the true spirit of C Triple G. Raw aggression, but at the same time having the prowess to back mm. it up. I mean, that was a stupidly ridiculous call by Koskyu, and he pulled off a insane play, right? I mean, he was like 30% HP left, and he still got the Charge Buster shot. I was thinking he was toast, and he was just throwing away that Booyah opportunity. But no, man, he was the difference maker. And that A124 pop, like you said, just, you know, time to perfection. He's the second one on the overall leaderboard when it comes to the MVP for the eliminations, and of course, on fire, taking the cake. And this is just one of those instances where you see the Booyah team dominating the elimination leaders, right? And with unreal numbers. Peter taking the eight assists. He has got no eliminations. So one might think that, hey, the guy wasn't doing anything for the team. No, he was going out there. He was knocking down those players and making it possible for the others to take those eliminations. Dew walks away with a four revival for the squad. Unfortunately, SDE didn't have a good as a round as they wanted. Homeboys surprisingly surviving pretty long this time around when they knew that they were about to be overtaken by Team Flash. They just don't want the 18th spot, but I think they need a better motivation than that. Yeah, I think, you know, when it really came down to the top four teams, they were just overpowered, right? In terms of gunfights, I, there was no team that they could clearly win. Like, Evo's Divine, not really a good chance. C Triple G, not really a good chance either, but they gave it the best shot. In terms of top three weapons, again, 
Long Range seems to be the name of the game. The Woodpecker with 16 eliminations, followed by the Bison with 15, and then the Trogon this time with 13. It is just a absolute wrecking machine out there, the Bison, but the Woodpecker has been outshining it for today. Two games in a row. Am I shocked? Absolutely not. You definitely can do well out there with that armor penetration. And look at the points, man. 35 insane points picked up by C-Triple-G in a back-to-back -back booyah run. He was divine Ooh. picking up the third spot. Sorry, second spot here with the 21. Team Flash picking up 14. And where is Homeboys? Down here at 11. Oh, goodness me. They are just a couple of points away. Unfortunate that Homeboy survived that long. Yeah, very, very close, in fact. So, <laughs> I mean, Flash still at the bottom, I, yeah. I assume, but not that far away. He was the Vino. We didn't get to talk about these, mm. this team much, but if in, for two rounds in a row, they finished top two. Yeah. So it's a very good finish for them. I think they have definitely put themselves slightly ahead of uh, of IDS, who got off to an incredible start, and then come round number four, IDS just completely fell flat, and the standings uh, does tell that story. STE pushed to fourth, uh, reverse rate pushed to third. C Triple G ten points away from tying up with Buriram and Evo's Divine back to fifth place and overtaking ideas. Oh yeah, absolutely. And of course, both the Indonesian teams just being over Expand is gonna make them giggle a tad bit. Expand does need to hustle quite a little bit because they are now just clocking in right beside Attack All Around, who's not even playing today. So this should be an unacceptable round for the Malaysian squad, who is the number one within the region. We are looking forward to them to climbing up, but the question is, can they get it done within the next two games here? Yeah. Overtaking Triple A is a no-brainer, but catching up with IDS as well as EWAS is going to take quite a bit of hustle. And like you said, Team Flash doing something, but perhaps just not doing enough. Look at that, man. Four points needed for them to overtake Homeboys. Homeboys hanging on for their dear lives. And their only motivation right now is to not feel the wrath of the 18th spot. I'll tell you the craziest thing is that you look at the amount of eliminations. Homeboys has 60. Team Flash have 100. It really tells you where the priority lies for these two teams, right? Homeboys, that without a shadow of doubt, the worst in gunfights because they have the least amount of elimination counts, but they are getting decent placement points, and that alone is keeping them ahead of Team Flash. How crazy is that? It's pretty ridiculous that Homeboys are struggling with the eliminations out there, and I just cannot brain why that would be so. This is a team that has gone all the way to the world stage. Ah, okay, the performance there was of course questionable, but they were capable enough of doing that. Consistency in the Malaysian region was there as well, but a little painful to see what's happening out here. But of course, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we have to take a break before we continue this crazy chaos. We'll be back in five. How'd you like them apples?
you like them apples? Welcome back, survivors. Now we head on into the map that C Triple G calls themselves the king on. And I don't think they are wrong. They truly are the kings of Nextera. Even Buriram has got nothing on them. With a back-to-back -back Booyah, they are looking solid to get it done once again. My name is AJ. I'm the Mustache down here with Husky. We are your casters for the day, and we've got two more games to go, sir. Historically, the most Booyahs a team has gotten in a single day, mm -hmm. whether it's six or eight matches, is three. Yeah. Now, C Triple G, I mean, there are a couple of teams who has had chances to make it a four, but it has never happened. Yeah. And with C Triple G's current momentum, there's a good chance that it might just be today we make history or they make history. Buriram is sweating, <laughs> but of course they can't find their recovery tomorrow. I would say Stalwin might have to sweat a dad bit here because Eva's Divine is on a stellar performance, on a stellar run, albeit they are about 40... Are they? No, they are 50 plus points behind Stalwart Esports. But we have seen a little bit of a struggle in terms of Stalwart finding that consistent run for themselves in here today. So there is a potential that Evos cuts down the distance between themselves as well as Stalwart in a way that it kind of puts the team from it, Thailand on notice a tad bit. Especially when Stalwart, there have been multiple... Uh, multiple occasions where when push comes to shove, Stalwart, they just could not cross the finishing line, right? On normal days, they do fine. But when things get heated, when there's higher stakes, suddenly they start struggling, start getting picked off, start losing gunfights. And it has been a persistent problem that's been uh, haunting them for like, what, almost, uh, more, almost two years now? So Evo's Divine, they can definitely leverage on this. And you look at the amount of points between uh, these two teams. Sure, they're separated by a handful of points. And then you look at the numbers of Booyahs, I'd say Evo's Divine is doing overall slightly better, right? Because they only got two Booyahs and Stalwart has six. I mean, at the end of the day, if at all Stalwart would want to make that change, you know for a fact the Alk Firepower can switch it up instantaneously, right? 239 eliminations versus Evos Divine, who are currently on 190. There's a good reason why they are in the fourth spot and have been able to dominate the overall leaderboard for quite a bit. But this is that recovery gameplay from Evos Divine, and I think I'm going to be on Indonesia's side a tad bit more here because the competition has just been hounded by all of the Thai squad. Even look here, man. Three out of four Booyahs. It's all out of Thailand. Indonesia surely should be catching up any time now. But Indostars themselves are trying to catch up. And it's not up to a Thailand squad. It's up to their own brothers, Evos Divine. They are about 22 points behind them. And quite a bit of hustle is needed. Two games should be enough. Yeah, it definitely should be. But we, you put out the stats earlier on, AJ. See, Triple G, just the best map on Xterra, followed by BRU and PE Sports. But mm. of course, PE Sports, they have their own struggles. So far today, hasn't been founding much, much success. But it's just enough to, you know, drag them to 10th spot on the overall leaderboard. C Triple G is going to be a problem because they are hot. And when they are really going at it, when they gain that momentum, it is really hard to stop them. Yeah, of course. And it is a opportunity for PE Sports now to just continuously step up the gameplay, right? Because they're just a few points behind RRQ Kazu, less than 10 points. So a decent enough game should be able to get this done for them. But the problem is every time they perform decently well, RRQ just performs one step ahead of them, which is a pain. But I think this is kind of what you need for the region, right? You can't just mm. have one guy, perform, uh, one team performing really well. Look at Thailand. BRU performs well. C Triple G then performs well in a reverse <laughs> rhythm. It's a uh, so it, it has to be not just on a on a regional basis in terms yeah. of competition. Locally, yeah. the competition has to also be there. So I, I'm yeah. liking what I'm seeing from Indonesia. You know, Evos Divine having two good rounds in a row, overtaking Indo Stars, which at the start of the day didn't seem possible. Yeah. And Indo Stars are not that far away from Evos Divine, right? One good round could set could you know set them even again. 
Yeah, I mean, he was divine. They just crept up on us out of nowhere. But like you said, Indostars, they had a fantastic start at the very um, start of the day. Bermuda as well as Purgatory was not too bad at all for them. We did see them get into that final circle. Now, as we fly on into Nextera, we want to see if or not that crown can just be thrown onto the head of Peter and gang. C Triple G looking to dominate back to back to back. High teams should be elated. Three out of four Booyahs dominated by Thailand. The first one was the first red. And then, you know, Indostars kind of uh, took down C Triple G in the final circle. And C Triple G came back with the Vengeance. Two consecutive Booyahs. And as fate have it, we are on their best performing map. But this flight path might change it a little bit. Very skewed towards that eastern side. You can see some early draws. C Triple G being one of them. I think they are going to go to Twin Bridge to kind of start it off. And Kind of a minor spread to mortar runes as well. Uh, Twin Bridge, which means Expanse not going to be able to hop on in there. Let's see exactly where they go. Intellect Center is going to be dominated by Heavy as they move on in. Zipway overtaken by Homeboys. There is a potential that they get pursued here. We did see a team drop close by enough, but no. They did manage to pull away away from Zipway, I believe, towards Rustown. So they should be good for the time being. That means homeboys get to homeboys conspiracy gets to kind of stay here. Not much area to loot up though at Zipway. It does allow you to move around the map better. It's a bit of a substitute situation for GOW. Eza is out, bringing in death. Let's see how this changes the dynamic because Eza has been one of the uh, top performing players for at least. I think in the Vietnam scene for GOW, right? In terms of yeah. being a support player. Uh, he has made a name for himself last year at FFSI where he had this crazy, what, 1v4 clutch. That was unforgettable. Made the top 10 play for the uh, Hall of Fame at the very end of the tournament. Uh, Peace was also making a bit of a switch. Ban is out and Don't Cry is back in. And we did manage to crown him as the god. He's our god. Mm -hmm. Death thus far has played m considerably much lesser games. But if you really want to think about it on the overall grand scheme of things, Lee Kuang, RIP, as well as Dian have been performing a little bit better than Iza. Not, not much, much better, but a little bit better. So if you wanted to find a player to re you know replace and have Death have a little bit of game time out there, Iza just is the right choice for GOW. Fingers crossed this is a change that will be able to get them up the leaderboard though because we know GOW desperately needs that. They are currently not in the top 12 and they are more than 30 points away from catching up with WAG and WAG is not even playing today. Two games should be decently enough but we're talking about a team that's not performing at the moment. Yeah, a team that's... You know, just chilling today. Even RQ Kazu made a change. Legolov is now out. They brought in uh, Wings, I believe. So teams are starting to make some adjustments late into the day. But like you said, I think it's very much needed, right? All these teams that are making adjustments have been struggling. And RQ Kazu is... I wouldn't say it's a rare sight to see them in this spot. They've definitely had moments where it really felt like... Where's the high performance team, right? That that at one point was the best in the region. And I think now we're seeing them. Abe is gonna try and chase down LBT. At least this is going to be a free point for our Q Kazu. Should be a flawless execution. LBT still no chance against that. GOW oh, in those stars able to just turn things around instantly and death is the first blood here the guy just got in and he's instantly being tortured Lee Kuang trying to recover something for the squad but the player behind the glue wall instantaneously disappeared off screen Axel and gang managing to find the players on the side of team flash and a couple of eliminations Artemis out of out for the count already and death with the instant revive onto him the question is will GOW be able to take Indostars out or do they back away from this engagement? A one-to-one -one trade, that's fine. They're trying to take Lima out of the skies as well. To no avail. And D Kuang cutting down the distance with a portal goal. Gets oh, tagged no. up. And my goodness, that was a bad investment. Very, very unlucky. Did not know that Heavy was around. Heavy finding a free pick. Well, Leem gets to breathe a sigh of relief. I'm not sure if Heavy saw Leem. But it's definitely a bit more doable. If GOW continues to try and chase him down, you can fight back. Or maybe not, Heavy just found him. 
RQ. Ooh, torturing. Play is on the side of Stalwit. You managed to find one recovery. I'll be curious to Ouch. see what's going on on that particular battle. But he was divine against Indostars now. My goodness, this is a fantastic fight. If you're Indostars, if you get to take Divine out right here, right now, things can be different, but it looks like that is not the case. Raz, the final survivor, and he was divine. Hot on his tails. Boy, you better survive or it is all over in terms of a catch-up gameplay. Yeah, IDS is falling flat. I don't think they have oh, a, had a say in that matter though, because uh, one of their members was already, you know, crippled from the get-go. GOW, very unfortunate. An early exit for them. RQ Kazu getting gunned down by Stalwart, but Evo's Divine. Sights set on the heavy. This is unfortunate for GOW as well. Uh, early bow out. We were expecting them to find some decent points. The 30 that we were talking about is clearly impossible with just one more game left in here for them. So no top 12 for GOW by the end of today. In the stars on the other hand, boy still broke. Can't buy his team members right back just yet. And homeboys going in for the chase onto the C Triple G squad that's looking to dominate back to back to back. Bad idea. Unfortunately for them, they do not know who they chase. Indo Stars down. Raz taken out. On fire finds Jambal. And it looks like homeboys about to be toasted as well. You can say the same for Evo's Divine. Actually, they're taking a lot of beating from Heavy. Expand, avoiding all these conflicts. I see that. Boonjin just found Extroy. Where did that come from? Was extra isolated? I don't think so. But Reverse Red is now in a position to torture Cobra. Yeah, yeah. Good backup. Shots coming out of absolutely nowhere. I have no idea exactly where they're hitting from. Oh, Diamond wow. up top. Crime MKS equal to me. Did not see exactly where that was coming from. Cobra though with the AC80. What Can he kill? recover this? There is a hit out of that whole map. And Diamond, RGS 50. No clips yet. Farming comes in for the finisher. And it is perfect with the Mag 7. The job's too easy. Sarming disposing of the player from the side of Expand. Cobra had no chance. In the meantime, Heavy trying their very best to take Ewa's Divine out of this equation. And it looks like Ray is just going to be crawling around. One more got away with the vehicle in hand. Apex out of the equation as well. Heavy's not going to be able to find the full elimination here. And it looks like Expand is making a solid recovery on the opposite side as well. Yeah, very unlucky for Cobra. Just now, he, uh, the moment Crime MKS was taken out, he got hit by the A124, so at that point, there was no escape for him. But thankfully, I believe Axel was still around, so he's going to bring Cobra back. Span not out just yet. It's definitely a hard reset for them. P Sports, on the other hand, they are so far away from the circle. You got to start moving now. Steve, with seven eliminations already, this is a decent start for them. Reverse Red's Diamond on the other hand. The King of Eliminations for to his name. Heavy trying their, their very best to make it into the top 12. And they are 18 points from overtaking WAG, who are currently in the 12th spot and not playing today. Even if they do manage to take over, it's going to be pretty difficult to defend it against WAG and squad tomorrow. Team Flash manages to get one consolation for themselves. This is the first elimination after the full squad has gone through revival after revival. Yeah. I mean, at least Team Flash are still around, right? You want to chase, you want to catch up to Homeboy Syndicate. This is one of those rounds. It's never been this close. It was very on the other hand, against Heavy this time. Taking control of the cross arsenal, but look at behind, there's actually a flank from Reverse Red. And Heavy, you gotta start moving right now. The, the gold portal only brings it up to the room. Hans! Already knocked down from the angle, I believe, courtesy of Diamond. What a time to be to go for that flank and Sa Ming also responds. And sure, Heavy, you're getting these revives in by reverse red. They are just cashing in on these elimination points. And unfortunately for Kabi, he will be hunted down as well. Reverse red not letting anyone escape. Heavy still in the game, but heavily crippled. Ah, uh, heavily crippled indeed. Reverse red 10 eliminations already. And it's clear they are looking to catch up at C Triple G, but they need to bridge the gap of 38 points within two games. And at the same time, it has to be 38 points more than C Triple G, who are not looking to slow down as I talk about them. A elimination off screen as well by one more. 
This is a decent start for C Triple G to dominate the map they call themselves the king on. Ooh, look at that man off screen, dude. They are doing a number on Divine. What? Even, uh, even, ha! you know, Reverse Red chipped in, so there goes it was Divine. Ninth place. It's oh, but they run now. Seven eliminations. Doesn't feel like they're gonna stop anytime soon. This is just a, mm -mm. but a small reset. Right in front of the Revival Point. Heavy, oh no. Oh, this is not a place to be in. Oh, well, Flash is. The Tigers then. This is, this is Dunzo. Whoever that heavy guy is. <laughs> He's flying out. <laughs> it's like, nope. Not here. But how far can he go? Not too far at all. Circle's damaging him. He has to drop. He has to move on in. Butterfly finds Cobra. And it looks like that's the third player out of Team Expand. And in the meantime, Team Flash, who was going back to their old ways of torturing Malaysian squad, are right back in it. Earlier, they took two lives away from Expand. And now, they're shutting down the homeboys themselves. Spade down and out of the equation already. Homeboys trying to hang on with the butterfly, but the guy can't sting. Indeed, he just floats around. Jembal tries to get away. Question is, can he? Expand has one more survivor hanging on for his dear life. Somehow still able to hide. Even for STE, they are able to bring the fallen teammates back up. And do he's still sticking around this area. Doesn't seem like he is spotted, at least not just yet. Homeboys, on the other hand, they are starting to back off and STE wrapping around the corner. This could be a three way fight. Scrime and KS just wanting to hide from the commotion. Mm. Team Flash taking control of that entire building. Homeboys, on the other hand, they are fighting PE sports. And STE, they see all of this. It's just absolutely torturous if you're an Expand fan. I mean, what can you hope and pray for in order to get some sort of consistency out of these boys? I mean, a very capable team, but just not capable enough to deliver that solid performance back to back to back. At this point, even Homeboy is doing slightly better than them, managing to survive the onslaught of Team Flash, albeit they were the second ones. In fact, the third party to that engagement between Expand and Flash. Potentially the saving cause as well as to why Expand was not eliminated and why Crime could sneak on away. The esports on that heavy revival earlier. How long on? A sliver of health left and the treatment gun will help him recover a tad bit. He patches himself right up and Crime and KS just bit the dust as Expand takes the 8th spot. Very unfortunate. Nothing much that Expand could do. PE Sports now under a lot of pressure. Exposey! Trying to make that rotation actually gets knocked down. Boon James needs to pick him back up. They get all the glue on Melters so though. Expose back up on his feet. And he's ready for action again. Reverse Red not missing a beat, but Stalwart trying to spoil the party. As Reverse Red rushes into the compound where PE Sports is, but Stalwart, Ura! Ura! they are here to claim both the teams. Look at the bombardment stop. Finding Expose as Expose finally goes down. This is just so unlucky Ura! for Reverse Red. Diamond with his back to Expose. Not like they can't do, they could do anything. It's just stalwart catching the timing all too well. Oh, and, and it's the best timing against the best team there. Stalwart just behind Reverse Red on the overall leaderboard. They need 11 points to overtake, and it looks like they are taking those 11 points with their dead bodies. But the problem here is they are not done and dusted with the job just yet. Reverse Red still hanging on for their lives here. 12 points. Stalwart hanging on as well. PE Sports in a tight little corner, not wanting to get taken out. They stay super silent. C Triple G continues oh, to no. clean house. How many eliminations have they picked up thus far? Way too many, if you ask me. Never enough. I believe the whole team of C G is still alive, and look at them. The best possible spot in this map. Maybe you do if Stalwart, or maybe a, uh, maybe you do with Stalwart only, and Team Flash. But not too big of a challenge. And look at one more. Oh. A good place to find a couple of shots. That's two in a row. <laughs> oh, but no knockdown just yet. How can he do that though? You've got the AWM. One more, come on. Fourth spot, and it's still a hit mark. Narrow, cuts the distance. What are you doing, sir? And the whole of PE Sports taking a... Ah, oh, my goodness. They could just give four free points away to see Triple G. PE, you're just walking into your deaths. You better pull out the most fantastic play. Cause Q stepping Cause on Q. head right in front. He hit that A124. They're all disabled. The fact that Koskyu managed to retreat back to his team is crazy. P Sports, Peter knocks them down. Nero does get a trade back though. This could be doable. Yeah. And Sampad on fire. Uh, he what? is still around. This man 
does not relent on fire. Gets uh -oh. don't cry in PE sports. The whole formation has been broken. This should be a full push in the C Triple G, and yet they could not do it. Yeah, they kind of paid attention to two different teams at the same time. A little bit of a error in judgment here by PE Sports, but they are still alive nonetheless. And they, as long as they just shut up, they should still stay alive. And now Team Flash to deal with PE Sports has the upper hand here, but not in the numbers that are still left on their side. Flash somehow still hanging on. But we're getting into the final phase of the game already. Boon James is going to take that truck. <laughs> It'll be out of there for a while. Ah! Reposition into Team Flash territory. Saming getting Oi. rushed by. Look at on fire. Whoa. This guy unrelenting. <laughs> One more does get knocked down though, but pick back up. Of course, help the rive just in time. But this is it. C Triple G for the triple crown. The, tr the third in a row. Hongan has to come down from that roof. Yes, Stalwitz, their biggest threat here. C Triple G might just end up engaging with them first before dealing with Team Flash as well as PE Sports. That could just give Flash and PE Sports a get opportunity to walk away with the Booyah. One more hits, one more. Caramel down on the ground. Oh, Can no. he get the elimination as well? Taifa rolls around for that recovery. Stop takes Hwang An out, but that's the wrong player to be aiming for. And they're going for stop on fire. He's just gonna take the portal. Stop his stood no chance. Stalwart picked apart. The threat unravel for C Triple G Team Flash having their own problems. This stalwart in front of them, but the biggest enemy is not stalwart. It's C Triple G coming in hard, wiping out stalwart, and then Flash for the third Buya in a row. Unbelievable performance. Back to back to back for C Triple G, the kings of Next Terra. The kings of Next Terra and the absolute nobodies on Kalahari jumped up to perfection to be the best at Kalahari. What can C Triple G not do? What can Thailand not do? Even on a day they don't try, they still dominate. This nation chucks out the best of the best of the best in the world of Free Fire. This could be the second coming of C Triple G with such an explosive performance uncontested unstoppable i really feel like you're we're watching the example of uh, what happens when you're up against an unstoppable force and c triple g completely demolishing every single challenges in their way it started from what game two game one wiped out by expand game two finished second dropped to ideas at the end but game three onwards you only see c triple g on that kill feed it really felt like there was no one in this lobby that could stop them is this c triple g or buriram man dude they are on another level right now they needed 11 points to catch up and instead of just taking 11 for themselves they just went ballistic out there and now buriram i believe is about 20 points behind them and c triple g has got one more game one more game to go this is insanity at this point just absolute great lunacy. I mean, if you are C Triple G, who is to stop you, right? You, they, they, they are on such a good momentum. Yeah. Look at all the fights that they take. And it's not like other teams didn't try to challenge them. The P Sports did try. Uh, laps of judgment, sure, but attempts were made, but none of them worked. I mean, this is just C Triple G doing C Triple G things. 70 eliminations, 46 placement points, a total of 116 points picked up just today, and the day is not over. This is the fifth map. One final map to come, and the question is, where do we go? Could it be next Terra? Could we see a back to back to back to back? Could it be maybe Kalahari, where C Triple G just whooped everyone and hit the highest number of eliminations as well as the booyah for themselves? Dude, there's just no telling how this goes. But if it is either one of these two maps, maybe four booyahs in a row could just be a possibility. I'm telling you, looking at the track record for this for this team today, the only map that could stop them is if we go back to Bermuda. But I'll yeah. tell you something better. If we go back to Bermuda and they get a Booyah, they essentially clean up four out of five Booyahs today. The only map that they didn't get a Booyah was a Purgatory, and that itself was as close as it could have gotten. I'm leaning towards Next Era as well as Kalahari, man. <laughs>
<laughs> because I just want it to happen for Team Triple G at this point. But guess what? We go back to the Thailand desk because the interviewer is ready for a couple of more questions. Cod Q says, CG is the god of this map and it's true. And now I'm with the CTTT. Can you introduce yourself? CG Peter. Okay. I don't think you need to translate. I am CGTT Peter. That's what you say. Sorry. Okay, how do you feel to got triple booyah today? Do you feel like you can get three booyah? รู้สึกดีครับแต่เกมทะเลทรายผมรู้สึกว่ารู้สึกไม่ค่อยดีครับเพื่อนยิงกันหมดผมสูญหิวครับ I feel very happy but I'm not feel uh, satisfied with the Kalahari map because all my friends achieve all elimination but I didn't do anything Okay Which team is harder to deal with Thai team or other region คิดว่าทีมไหนหนักกว่ากันเวลาเราเจอระหว่างทีมไทยด้วยกันกับทีมต่างชาติเอ่อก็น่าจะเป็นทีมไทยครับต่างชาติก็เฉยๆครับไม่เท่าไหร่ครับ It should be Thai team because uh, other foreign team are just basic so so. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Uh, lastly, anything you want to say to your fans? มีอะไรอยากฝากถึงแฟนไหมคะก็ฝากเชียร์ทีมซีด้วยนะครับแล้วก็ฝากถึงแฟนนะครับรักครับ Okay. Uh, please support C G G and to my girlfriend. Love you. <laughs> okay. Such a good guy today. Ah, okay. Now back to you, Shawcaster. Yeah, he's a good guy indeed in the interview segment, but a bad, bad boy out there on the battlefield, whooping everybody. And C Triple G is guaranteed at this point to be the number one team to reach five. 100 points on the overall leaderboard. Currently, they're sitting down at 492 after that phenomenal performance. But dude, back-to-back -back crazy stuff out of this team. And who else but on fire? Who walks away with nine eliminations this time. 3,913 damage, 11 knockdowns. And usually, we just see the player with the highest number of eliminations having a decent number of damage. Perhaps not the best, but on fire is just built different. He's out there getting those knocks getting the damage in and finishing those opponents off as well not giving them a chance to breathe i mean who's to stop him right at, at this point he is just he is uh what what, what do we call it again he's in the flow state i think oh, the entirety yeah. of cgbg is in that flow state just mm -hmm. just gonna be gliding with the wind they are fighting as a unit this is a hive mind just birth out of pure brutality and aggression this entire game is on fire first one to lead the charge always uh, the first one to just dive head first into any engagement and come out alive. Yeah. And of course, one more look at this massive job done by him. And the eliminations do not speak for him. The damage as well as the assist truly do. 3,005 on the damage. 12 assists is insanity. On Fire walks away with the MVP on the elimination leaders with a 9 to his name. Red Diamond walks away with the second place with 6 eliminations. 5 and 5 for Artemis and Peter in 3rd and 4th spot. And of course, Dew takes the consolation here with the 4 eliminations for himself. Overall, I mean, what is to say, right? I, I suppose for Reverse Red, even though they didn't, they, they weren't able to get the Booyah, they did survive quite late into the round. Got decent number of eliminations. Team Flash also uh, kind of uh, bagging some numbers. And perhaps it might be enough to overtake Homeboys. We'll check in on that in a bit. But the key players for this entire match, of course, uh, B-Boy, you know, two revive, start with two rescues. And uh, Jembao, uh, reviving three of his teammates, but Peter, man, this guy, he's assisting his team. And it, it's, it's a bit, you know, different in terms of the role he's taking up, but he's fitting into it very well, right? The supportive role that Peter has been providing for his team is also very crucial to his team succeeding in these gunfights. And I think one consistent thing along the past three matches is the fact that the Woodpecker has been dominating. And I think it, the main reason for this is because the players are trying to keep a good distance between themselves and their opponents. Then those good glue, uh, good use of those portal goals has been able to give them that distance. But the Woodpecker cuts down all 
all of that space between them very, very efficiently. And from 35 points, there's a little bit of a drop in performance for CGGG, but who the hell cares? 31 and the Booyah. Third Booyah of the day. Three Booyahs back to back. This team is insane. If you call 31 points a drop in performance, it really shows that the standards, the bar has been set to oh, yeah. almost an impossible, an impossible height by C Triple G. But Team Flash, another good round for them, right? This is something that we've been looking for in Team Flash, and finally they've broken away from that last place, overtaking Homeboys by just seven points. Mm. C Triple G currently in first, putting ahead of BRU. Let's see how much more they can garner in that final round. But they definitely, like you said, will be the first team to hit 500 points. Expand overtaking attack all around. That's good, but they're not really good when you look at the fact that both of them were on 310 earlier. So Expand just picking up those four points is a little bit unacceptable because of what they can do out there when it comes to those gunfights, right? But we have to say it is not a easy lobby in here today. Group A and B, everybody's hungry. Everybody's decently warmed up. And who they are chasing is the two Indonesian teams of Indostars as well as Evos Divine who have been on a great set of performance today. Let's check out the roulette of the map selection. This map 6 coming up in a bit and C Triple G are you gonna get what you want? I mean, we have five maps available. Okay. And they've gotten Buyas on three of them. Call one, call one. Quick. All right, they're, 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 uh, Kalahari. Ah, right, Kalahari too. Kalahari? Kalahari? Oh, next era? Oh, ah. yeah, yes! Kalahari! Woo! Let's go, boy! And it looks like C Triple G just started smiling a tad bit more. The record was set here by C Triple G on Kalahari. 35 points, followed by 31 on Nextera, where they are the king set. Can we have a back to back to back to back booyah here for Thailand? C Triple G. I think I smell it already. I'm telling you. Some people might say, oh, Kalahari is their worst map. They got a, they started a record there earlier it on. It might be a fluke, but if they do it again, it ain't fluke no more. Look at that. Shout out to the second best team overall. The first, the, the second best team overall, but the best mm. team in this current grouping. Just one more good round and they're within arm's reach of catching up to Burira. I mean, dude. In the current grouping, they are now the best on Kalahari. And this is so, so ridiculously insane in terms of what they have managed to do. C Triple G with the eighth team overall on Kalahari, which is one stupidly ridiculous game. They are now the number one team on Kalahari. How do you even do that? I do not understand. And on top of everything else, Kalahari was their worst map. And now it's their second yeah. best map. And we are one step away from it being their best map. Yeah, this is uh, absolute crazy. I mean, BR, you better be taking notes right now. Oh, yeah. As we jump into Kalahari, our final map of the team. And he Triple G looking to set not just a record, but history. Final one, but still nonetheless a history to get four Buyas in a day. Four Buyas and consecutive. No one has ever done that. It's insane how they were nowhere on this map and now they're just right behind Buriram in terms of overall performance. I mean, Buriram has got an average of 22 points picked up on Kalahari. They have got an average of 16.6 points. An average of 17 is wow for a team that was not even breathing on this map prior to the game we played earlier. I know. It's, it's uh, let's see though, the drop. It nice. did change a little bit. I mean, they, they do go to Bayfront now. A 2-2 two -two split. That's how confident they are. Costco and on fire. Oh, the deadly dynamic duo of mm. C Triple G together. One more in Peter splitting out a bit more, but they're more of a supported role. IDS, it seems like they're about to just drop straight into reverse red. Another early fight. LP Sports on the other Ora. hand. They have found two members of Homeboys. Oh yeah, absolutely solid performance from PE Sports here. Right at the get-go, Homeboys. Suffering a tad bit. Red! Reverse red. Not really looking good here. As Indostars manages to find two players. Red down on the ground. The reversal is here. Diamond! The third player taken out of the equation already. Exposi, the final one. And down he goes. And it looks like this might just be over for reverse red. Host might be dashed. 
My goodness, Boon Jae. Did he go? Mark down. Able to run away just in time. Didn't want to hunt him down. Diamond finished off. IDS finally getting a strong start. And of all teams, it was on to reverse red. Game Oof. got. Any shot? Was that homeboys? Yes, yeah, it, was. it was. Not really sure if you wanted to sh fire that shot though, homeboys. Yeah, what in the world was he thinking? <sighs> that was a horrible mistake. That's, that's one good reason why they are the 18th team on the overall leaderboard. They got into a skirmish, they started running away, and out of nowhere, he just shot at them when he had no chance whatsoever to find the finisher. Perhaps just to distract, but my goodness, that was not called for at all. They could have just gotten away silently. Uh, just greed, I guess. I, I don't know. It's uh, definitely <laughs> very, very weird. Greed and equals now, possibility of elimination, Husky. There was no possibility whatsoever. You know what they say, 99% uh, of gamblers quit before they make it big, right? So, <laughs> have to try something. It's <laughs> a good one. Pais, can he nail Axel down? MP40 in hand. The rate of fire is there for Axel and he chooses to not go in for that serious engagement. Goodness me! Did not know he had the assault rifle in hand as well, so Fai is in a lot of trouble. And okay, make that double. <laughs> That's Roy and Cobra going for the finisher. Fai easy! Not really sure if you needed to toss that nade at him, but you know, good on you, expand. Still got, got rid of him. Homeboy's finishing last. Yep, they're gonna be there for a while. Uh, can say that again. Someone's sh shooting an expand. Not sure who. And they all scatter. Just to find some reposition here. He was divine on the other hand. The potential skirmish set up against me esports. It is, I mean, for he was divine. Actually, they also sped up. Wait, don't cry. Somehow found aim got. Was that even a push? I believe it's in the building. Yep, esports storming the front. Ray also got found. It's two members of he was divine finished off. Oh my god, PE, what? A sudden turn of events here for PE. Four eliminations in the in the, no, no. And they tag up expand as well, who are rotating in directly towards them. This could go south. This could go really, really well. North for PE Sports. They are all geared up. They send out the UAV. They get that information. Counter UAV sent through from expand as well. Instantly taken out of the air. LBT has got eyes on them. And Kabi also found Apex. This is a rough round for Evo's Divine. Picked off everywhere they go. Reverse Red able to get some revives. Same for Evo's Divine. Heavy not done just yet though, it's Gade against Han. Kabi from behind. Push. The bombardment from below, Jonah is also there. Joining with the... Oh, wow! Oh, no. I'm just gonna just harpoon into his face. Grappling right on top of Gade for the finisher. That's too beautiful of a grapple, man. I mean, hopped right into Ooh. the glue wall, sprayed him down with a bison. Too beautiful. But PE Sports continues the skirmish off against Expand. But Expand is very slow to this party. Only one player has made his way in here, and I believe he's gonna pay the price. Don't try with the Trogon and Execution X Roy out. P spot six already. Expand on the run. Nero. What was that? Cobra didn't even stood a chance. This could be. Uh oh, Span getting wiped out. Yep. Two more of Expand members going down. I believe they're still in the game. Someone got away. A PE Sports is absolutely annihilating everyone that steps up in front of them. This is fantastic. Ah, oh, one more for PE maybe. Quick reposition with the portal go. And now they want to hit down on GOW. But perhaps they bit off more than they could chew here. Good circle around, but the backup just not there from the rest of the players on the side of PE. Only one push forth with that portal go. But they've got eyes on the rest of the players as well. And now GOW might go in here for the finisher. I mean, there is the portal. And they're trying to chase down PE Sports. Long range shot, PE Sports continue to be on the run and spotted by Exposi. Uh oh, GG. Oh, this is just, uh, this just got 10 times worse for PE Sports. Boon Jim mm. intercepting them also. Oh, Nero. You have uh -oh. no idea who is behind you. He's gonna avoid Boon Jim with a grappling shot down from the skies, anyways. <sighs> Boon Jim just too sharp. Boss to scatter here. And Boon Jame finding the finisher. Don't cry. Ugh, it's about to cry because there's just no way he can run away from this. Two teams just pinstering him in. GOW and Reverse Red. But now, EE has let 
GOW directly to potentially their annihilation, directly to reverse red, one of the strongest teams out there from Thailand. And Boon Jame gets an easy finisher. Death will be able to trade on to Saming. That's a big one. Boon Jame down as well. This is a crazy performance from GOW. All four players still alive and kicking. Everyone is so scattered. Everyone is taking all these isolated fights and Exposy. Uh oh. Of course they know he is in there. Come on, this is an easy nade. <laughs> Alright, that's uh, caught between the glue walls. Quite unlucky, but Death the portal is going to chase this. He's going to chase this. Exposing, he's low. Hmm. Found him. Good play with the portal go to avoid the grenade, but literally nowhere to run there. Flash outside the circle. Stalwart pursuing them. Sending out the UAV to scan out one player first. Detected already the three others. Might just uh, sacrifice this one guy. And back away, or potentially circle on in for that backstab. It's going to be the play team flash. Stalbert just waiting to bounce. Well, dude just got shot. Meanwhile, Razor actually finished off Lone Cry. So, the uh, RQ Kazu engaging in a couple of pickoffs. Heavy also on the kill uh -oh. feed. Look at this. So messy. Shin and Volley both in the red. Yanbin trying to find that pesky player of SDA, but Caramel, he keeps repositioning and finding pickups on Team Flash, and Team Flash, or at least they found Dew, that is something, but stop yeah. in the meantime, gets an exchange, it's Yanbin who goes down. Uh, Dew sacrificed already, so no flanker for Team Stalwart. They can't stall for time anymore. One play outside the circle, getting tagged up, in fact, two of them outside the circle now, getting tagged up by the zone. Caramel, the only one inside. And he's trying to cut off the rotations of Team Flash all alone. Woodpecker in hand. Shin flies on up. He spots Artemis getting on top of the roof as well. Nobody wants to use that portal go. Repositioned by Shin. Here comes Yan Bin as well. Back into the game. They are all on the hunt for Caramel. Is this a sweet prize for them? One more extra elimination point. Yan Bin gets tagged up by the Homer. Bad player to tag up here, sir. Caramel downed. Unfortunate. You don't get to choose who Homer chases. Nope, so into the hornet's nest, stop. Oh, spotted eye by Volley also. Team Flash somehow able to recover their health. And I'll stop in danger. What was that shot? Stopping Shin mid-air, this guy refuses to go down. And it looks like Stops managed to recover a tad bit here as well. Shin is not going to be lost. Crawls behind the crates, very smart maneuvering. Waits for the backup. Gets picked right back up. No, no. It's gonna let him bleed. Shin is sacrificed. Artemis. What are you doing, sir? Does he know where Stop is? Oh, no, no, no. He picked him. I don't think they saw where Stop went. Okay, so Stop gets to get up. Gets to run away from this. As Dew finds Nero. It's crazy how SD has been picked off so many times in this round. And still has the full team. A game of recovery and do the single handedly circling on around. I mean, you can expect him to snipe, you can expect him to play those CQCs with the SMGs. What can do not do? Well, it's gonna be quite a long journey for him. Well, at the 10 minute mark, so these circles and start to hurt. You gotta make that journey into the safe zone, which is exactly what IDS has just done. Yeah. Command post, so that's where expand is. There is a flank from behind. Expand. Don't reveal this. This might be a chance. Cobra getting tagged up. IDS. And they overcome expand. They're gonna go for the crunch. Mm -mm. There's, there's still someone on the flank. Who is that? Lee literally just used his A1 to force. So expand uh, uh, sitting duck at this point of time. They have to depend on their gunplay. Cobra. Charge Buster can't do much, but Tail just nails him down with the Drogon and now the barricade inside. Crime down as well as Lee whips out the grenade launcher. IDS overtaking the compound instantly against Team Expand. Meanwhile, Axel sent on the run. GOW against Heavy. Two enemy teams fighting, batting it out. Cluster comes through. DN's gonna be drop low. Jonah, another cluster. This one. Barely chipping Di Kwang, but never mind. Ooh. Third one coming in. Deanne ah. again. Down low, but this time Hans will collect him. The fourth from Jonah. And he still has more to come. The clusters making it hard for GOW. Maneuver in this post quarter combat. This labyrinth of glue walls. Hans does get dropped, but GOW did not stand a chance at all.
Yeah, beautiful finisher by Heavy here. Great anticipation. The flurry of grenades got those tags in. Hans found that finisher with the fantastic flank that he pulled off the left-hand side. And Heavy overtook that situation pretty decently well. And made sure God of Wolf does not catch up with them. And they can continue looking for the 12th place. Once again, they are up against Onyx Olympus as well as WAG on the overall grand scheme of things. And both those teams are not in play today. So it should not be impossible for Heavy to breach the top 12 at this point, their yeah, performance should be enough to get them there. And Axel just got rid of PE Sports, so we have seven teams left. One of them is stalwart, the other is C-Triple-G. Taking it slow, C-Triple-G, they're not in a rush at all. <laughs> they're definitely not, man. I mean, after performing back to back to back, all they want to do now is protect their throne of phenomenal play and set the record here for the most consecutive booyahs any team has picked up. Question is, will their safe play play against them as they get stand out by Flash? This next rotation will be a bit hard. Oh. You take the main road or go through the river or the bridge. Three different options, but like you said, Team Flash scanned them out and, it's, and it seems like they want to take the fight to Team Flash or at least they want to give a bit of a response to Team Flash. Time is not going to allow them to fight very long outside the circle, though. Took the portal already? They want to get rid of Team Flash? Yeah, they cut what? the distance. They know they can't waste any time here. Peter! From the back, and one more just finding those tags from a long way out on fire now. Catching hold of Wally, spots him out. Cost you right on top, cutting down the rotation, and cost you absolutely inexcusable rotation. And he would have not been forgiven if he had missed that, but the charge buster does not fail him in the meantime. Expand out in seventh spot. C is way too good, way too good. Mm. They com they understood the assignment. Sure, we didn't wipe out Team Flash, but we've done enough damage. And now Team Flash, they're going to go into this late stage of the game with nothing much left in the backpack. And c g they assume control of the entire northeastern side. They in the grand scheme even of things. That, they can even take the time rotating in. I mean, there's Oracle Kazu, but that's pretty much it. In the grand scheme of things, Flash was looking to overtake Toda, another Malaysian team. And do they only needed one point to do that? And I believe they have just done exactly that. What? Fact, even better. One more out of nowhere. Clipping the wings of wings. Knocking him down. Oi, oi, oi. The grenade. Up close and personal. But on fire down on the ground. Elimination is there as well. Peter chips in those grenades to help out his team member right up on top. But Nuts is just stayed in there. Barricaded. And he puts up a solid portal goal to get out of the trouble. Uh, Kosio had to back off for now. It's a good attempt. I mean, one more is so sharp with these headshots. It's one thing to hit a body shot, but it's another to get these one taps. This man, mm. out of this world. But they did lose on fire, so at least C Triple G, they're down in manpower. Yeah. They're not gonna be as threatening. They now have to play the strategy of Indostars, let the rest do the work, and chip in at the very end of the game. But look at Peter, rotation. bro. Look Come on. Are you kidding me? Circles all the way out with the portal go outside of the zone. And he pays a high price for that. Big risk, big reward. But that time, it just absolutely busted his butt out there. Spotted out by Stalwart of our team. Very unfortunate. Stalwart. Good chance Again? for Retribution on fire. Actually got brought back, I believe. How? Peter wanted to bring him back. So, able to do it just in time. There was a vending machine. Would have been perfect if Peter didn't go down, but at least with we'll C Triple G, there's some. They, they still have three people left. They're looking and to they're take pushing. the fight. Look at this. What madness is C Triple G cooking up? This is going to be such a hard push, but if they make it work, they have a good chance. Team Flash and RQ Kazu, even stalwart to a certain extent, in that conversation on fire. Remember, he doesn't have much in the tank. One more circling around from the back. Blue Wall Meltis right behind C Triple G. They are in a very terrible position right now. RRQ Kazu inside alongside Stalwart. Oh, goodness me. Flash is there as well. This is just way too crowded. And look at Indostas. A very smart position to stay away from all of this trouble. They have been able to play this meta really, really well. Might not be able to stay away for much longer. RRQ Kazu getting eliminated very unfortunately. And now Indostas, they're going to get threatened by Heavy. 
the best round. Honestly, Heavy's best round. What? So far, Shin knocked down by the blue zone. This could give an opportunity. One more again. Point blank onto Team Flash. C Triple G refuses to go down. And now Heavy shows up. Kabi instantly takes a shot to the body. C Triple G keeping Heavy at bay. C Triple G still in it. And it is insane that that is the case. They should have been down and outed a long time ago already now, Heavy. In a sticky situation, C Triple G has got the better position in the overall grand scheme of things. Right, right up on top. Says the players of Stalwet. And this is going to be a threat here. They reposition. Very smart use of the portal go. Out here on the circle. Stop gets tagged up. And now Indo Stars forced to commit to a battle. And C Triple G also forced out into the open. They got to isolate these fights. But the circle is not going to allow that to happen though. B-Boy keeping them at bay. Saifa the first to go down. Is IDS coming in from two fronts. Stalwet to receive the full force of the Indonesian squad. Both eliminations already, 18 gf more. This time on fire gets caught. C Triple G will not get the fourth in a row. Maybe IES will find a second in the first day of the third week. Lee brought back up. It's only them and Heavy. Can Heavy put one up for Vietnam? At the 11th hour, is Ras to rush in, finding Jonah Hunt to the back. Kami finds Ras. It's an even trade. 18 there gets down. Hunt and Kami putting in the numbers. And Heavy dragging themselves across Come the finish line yeah. to close out the day and to bring one back home for Vietnam. And to bring Yun So back on camera as well. We've been waiting for this the whole day. The best host out there. The best possible ending. I could not have asked for a better <laughs> Amen. finisher to the day. Amen. Amen indeed. And Heavy, they have been doing some heavy lifting out there. They have been desperately trying to get into the top 12. They were eight points away. And instead of just hitting the eight, they went all the way, ripping that booyah back for themselves. Vietnam is pleased that they have been represented well by Team Heavy. A little unfortunate that PE Sports couldn't go all the way with this one as well. But of course, they needed a lot to catch up with attack all around in the 8th spot. And now we have got two teams from Vietnam in the top 12. We did have two teams from Vietnam in the top 12. Unfortunately, uh, one of them got kicked down and the other one just took their place. Yeah, so it's still... Uh, we still, like you said, only have two teams. But at least the competition is a bit more closer, right? Heavy, mm. put, uh, heavy for now, list themselves as a contender. Oh, now yeah. they just gotta keep up the performance. I mean, this this final game, Heavy really went all out. Right? These early picks, these crappy fights ended up benefiting Heavy in the long run. I mean, no doubt at all. The fights were crazy, but Heavy, they held their own pretty fine out there on the battlefield, positioning supremacy. They were out in the open, but they had they 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 forced themselves into a position where it was risky, but they were watching their six at all times, right? Nobody could take that back step. A couple of glue wall melters did come finding them, but they dealt with that situation really well. They knew that C Triple G, okay, they didn't know C Triple G was in front of them, but they knew there was a team inside that compound and they were keeping a close eye on them. The moment they stepped on out, they got those heavy shots in and managed to walk away with those eliminations. But I did not expect them to walk away with the Booyah. I was thinking Indostars was going to hit the final one at the very end of the game. Yeah, and just a couple of individual clutches at the final fight, right? I think Kabi able to get to the very back. Uh, that really kind of set the tone for Heavy to take that Booyah and kind of end the day at least on a high note. But this game, uh, just now we caught a glimpse of Homeboy's Conspiracy. They've been watching everything go down because they got wiped out like what, three minutes in. And for a good period of time, there were just so many scrappy fights. It's just 1v1s, 1v2s, you run away, I catch up to you, I catch up to you, I take you down, and someone takes me down from behind. Very, very messy. But I suppose this is also what gave Heavy these extra points that they've been looking for. Uh, no doubt at all. I mean, they were desperately looking for those points and the, to be able to pull off a play where they found that final circle, being a team that's not the most aggressive out there, nor is the most threatening one out there, they were pretty blessed. The engagements that they found out before getting into the final circle were ones that they could deal with. God of War, for example, Team Homeboys, for example, were all engagements that they could deal with. Finally, when C Triple G, a heavy team looking for Team Heavy themselves, pun intended, they were able to overcome that thanks to their numbers. Well, this is definitely at least 
a good ending, I, I believe, mm. to not just the first day of week three at the halfway point, but also it's good for Heavy, right? This is a yeah. team that we have been wanting to see them on the regional slash international stage for a very long time, but it, they always fail to qualify. And, and sure, this is not kind of the original roster that we saw from a year or a year and a half ago, yeah. but this brand name has always been synonymous with one of the best teams in Vietnam. And yeah. It's good to see them finally making their recovery and clawing their way back right here and having a kind of a good showing. Yeah, absolutely, of course. They get to smile, they walk away with a booyah, but Indo Stars, they get to snicker a little bit in the background as well because the massive number of eliminations should help them get that number one spot. But Husky, now, the segment you and I have been waiting for all day long, we get to invite the best host right back in here. Let's bring Yun Sol on cam. Hello everybody, welcome back to our Vietnamese Booyah interview after the match. Right next to me is Heavy Khabi. Can you say hello to the audience, please? Thì không biết là Khabi có thể gửi lời chào đến các các bạn khán giả được không ạ? Hello tất cả mọi người đã xem lại chim. Hi everyone, uh, thanks for watching us. Then congratulations on your very first Buya of today. Just a simple questions to open our interview. How do you feel? Lần đầu tiên thì mình xin chúc mừng Khabi cũng như là tất cả mọi người của Heavy đã lấy được chiếc Buya cuối cùng trong ngày hôm nay. Thì không biết là chúng ta có thể mở cái buổi phỏng vấn này bằng một câu hỏi rất là đơn giản thôi. Bạn đã cảm thấy như thế nào ạ? Dạ em cảm thấy khá là vui. <cười> khá là vui thôi. <cười> vui thôi. <cười> Khabi felt pretty happy just about that. Then moving on to our first question. Uh, we have been through almost three weeks. This has been the third week. How do you feel the intensify of the tournament? Thì như Khabi cũng đã biết là chúng ta đã vừa trải qua sắp ba tuần thi đấu rồi, đây cũng là tuần thứ ba rồi. Thì Khabi cảm thấy như thế nào về cái nhiệt cái sức nóng hiện tại của FIFA World Series Spring 2024 ạ? À? Yeah, em cảm thấy khá là khắc nghiệt và đội tuyển nào cũng là đội tuyển mạnh. He felt pretty intense and of course every team step into this tournament is all strong teams. Then next questions. How do you feel about your team performance right now, especially you are having B-Boy as your teammates right now? Thì không biết là B-Boy đánh giá như thế, không, không biết là Khabi đánh giá như thế nào về đội của mình hiện tại, đặc biệt là khi chúng ta vừa có một sự hay hơi mới đó chính là B-Boy ạ. À? Dạ, tụi em cảm thấy kiểu đoàn kết, tự tin hơn. Dạ. Mọi người đã có luyện tập uh, cái uh, cái chiến thuật này với thành viên mới chúng ta nhiều chưa? Dạ, tụi em luyện tập ở Tuần giáo vừa rồi đến tận bây giờ. Yeah. He felt pretty confident and they're being more close to each other because they have been practicing with each other. Of course, here's the new member B-Boy together for almost like one week, like from the last week until this week. So it might be not a really long time, but they definitely do something with it. Then I saw that there was a site that you were having a combat with uh, God of Wolf. How were you handle that situation? Thì mình thấy là bạn có một cái pha cân hai với đội tuyển God of Wolf thì bạn làm như thế nào mà bạn có thể cân được lấy lại cái ván lấy được cái, cái thế thắng trong cái ván đấu đấy ạ? À? Dạ kiểu thấy mình còn kiểu kỹ năng chưa tốt nên kiểu chơi game nhiều hơn nên kiểu từ từ thì cũng thích nghi được với lo bắn hiện tại nên bình tĩnh dễ cân được. So với cái tuần thi đấu đầu tiên của mình thì Khabi có thấy là mình đã có sự phát triển gì về bản thân chưa? Dạ, không những bản thân mà kiểu cả team còn đoàn kết tin tưởng lẫn nhau hơn. So he felt like during all of the match, they have been trying to balance themselves, like just not being too rushed to fight into the match. That's how they get the winning match from God of Wolf and for himself not only feeling more confident but he also feel more close to his teammates so they can together figure out a way that to solve the problem and help the team getting more and more improved day by day then that is the end of our interview do you have any words you want to say to your viewer but also the fans thì chúng ta cũng đã kết thúc buổi phỏng vấn ở đây rồi thì không biết là bạn có lời nào muốn gửi đến các bạn khán giả cũng như là những người theo dõi hâm mộ của Heavy không ạ à? ừ, cảm ơn các bạn đã xem tụi mình thi đấu ngày hôm nay Thank you so much for always supporting us and watching our match today. That, that is the end of our last week. Then we will see you again after two weeks rest. Here we go again. Bye bye.
two this, weeks. I it was two more days, right? It was exact two more same days. Thing. And the saddest part about this two weeks break is we don't get to hear Yoon Sol speak. We don't get to see any gameplay, no interviews. We have two more days, right? We can make use of the weekend. <laughs> and then I can be emo for like two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> well, we like you said, man, we've got two more days of play. Let's see if or not we can have many more booyahs out of Vietnam. I mean, this girl is insane, I tell you. She's the, the host. She's the translator as well. And the questions are so freaking valid. I love it. But of course, let's it. bring the spotlight to Hans and Squad as well from Team Heavy. Three eliminations, nothing much to flex about, but Heavy being able to get that Booyah right back and that spotlight towards Vietnam is one that we can definitely commend. Yeah, and I think you can also kind of, uh, at least when we're talking about Heavy uh, getting this Booyah, we put the spotlight on them, we have to kind of bring the bar, lower the bar slightly, right? Because yeah. it's not like Heavy is... Uh, like a C Triple G or those aggressive teams that go mm. in and get the crazy points. This one is a more balanced team. So the numbers, they're not going to be ridiculous, but it's just enough to kind of get them across the line when the conditions are right. Yeah, I mean, multiple storylines here. We are not just focusing on the teams at the very top. We are focusing on the teams that are fighting their way in to make it into the top 12. And Heavy is just one of those squads. So for a team that has been struggling to get into the top 12, this is a solid performance for sure. Let's look, and look at this. A total of 11 eliminations and 5 of out of the 11 coming from Kabi with 1,615 damage. And even though B-Boy only got like one elimination, he did have five assists and he was yes. the one that sort of kept C Triple G at bay and, and you know prevented them from pushing in further. So this he also you know contributed to that final fight. But the elimination leader we have Nero and Kabi uh, each with five, followed by one more who has four uh, four, and then Raz and Lean as well, four each. Yeah, pretty slow game this time around, but props to Vietnam for taking two of the spotlights as far as eliminations is concerned. Nero getting a little bit of another spotlight focus here. LBT following suit from the side of PE Sports, who clearly have done very well. Vietnam has done very well in this final game. Three revives. Oh, actually, no, he got revived three times, Nero. Probably not the kind of spotlight you want for yourself. LBT reviving his squad mates four times throughout the game. Raz with the 10 headshots and the 7 knockdown spotlight for Hans from the side of Heavy. Yeah, and this is just, you know, a testament of when push comes to shove, sometimes Heavy can also put in the numbers. Again, the conditions has to be right and it's a bit harder for them to kind of make it work compared to teams who are generally better in a lot of these situations, like, you know, the Thai teams in general. But overall, this game, top three weapons, the Trogon is the first one that comes to mind. 14 eliminations for the weapon, the Bison yeah. is 13, and the Charge Buster finally getting some love. This is a shocker because one would expect Kalahari with the high elevations to have the snipers in play, but the Portal Go has absolutely switched the situation around at this crazy map. But, I mean, we saw the total number of portal goals used was just off the charts earlier. Yeah, just complete, uh, complete madness with so many teams mm. in close quarter combat, right? I think Charles Buster suddenly becomes a slightly more viable option. At least yeah. you get these one pumps. Of course, Heavy, they got the Booyah, but it's still in those stars that got the most points. 25 with 16 eliminations. Uh, Heavy in second place, 23. Citroen G, still not a shabby round. They got 16 for themselves and it's more than enough. Oh yeah, and of course, guaranteed the first team to breach the 500 point mark. Stalwart Esports chipping in those points as well, but not enough to catch up with Reverse Red, who managed to only pick up four points. But here's the disappointment. They actually needed a couple more. And let's look at the difference here. Two points away. Stalwart might be a tad bit annoyed with this, but it's okay. They get to try again later on. We still have another day of play for them within this week. Yeah. So this is going to be an interesting development. We'll see how this pans out, right? Because tomorrow, BRU will finally step onto the battlefield. Mm. They're not that far away from c -Triple -G, So overtaking c -Triple -G is not going to be an issue. It's a matter of how far can they track this lead. Expand. Not the best of days, but at least they had that one good round to give them that minor boost. So now they are ahead of attack all around. But again, tomorrow attack all around will step on the battlefield. And expand, I believe, will take a break. 
that means that Tech all around have plenty of opportunities to regain what's theirs. Yeah, they can sneeze and they can overtake, expand, no doubt whatsoever. Today has been a little bit, not a little bit, that's an understatement. It has been a very slow day for expand. They need to find that recovery on Sunday. But before we go there, let's put that spotlight back onto the MVP leader. It is one more from C, Triple G. And he has taken the spotlight and he is out doing Moshi. That's crazy. But look at this, man. We've got On Fire and Coscue in the exact exact same run. How insane is that? Yeah, I mean, On Fire got both his MVP titles today. I believe Stitch, I believe one more also got one of it, right? Because they got three Booyahs in Kolo. But, I mean, you have three out of five players on this MVP leaderboard. It really shows that this team this team is something else. They truly are. They are the most dominant team on the overall leaderboard. Albeit, they have got six games played more than Buriram United Esports. And Buriram makes their way back in tomorrow. And they've got two days back to back to play to dominate once again. Yeah, and I'm very excited to see how this is going to pan out. I mean, we've reached the end of the day. Two more days for week number three. We're going to sign off for now. It's Husky with the Pistachio AJ. Wish you guys a very good night. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Supplier! How'd you like them apples? <laughs>